Pascal. And their team captain, John Richardson. And facing them tonight, our top answer is Vernon K. Achtung, baby, it's Henning Venn. And their team captain, Sean Locke. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 32% of Britons aged between 25 and 39 live at home with their parents? I guess that can be awkward sometimes. For instance, if you're a grown-up who's currently watching this with your parents, why don't you all just take a moment to imagine each other having sex? <laughs> See? <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Only 1% of Brits don't own a TV. You know what I call people like that? Anything I like, they're not going to see this. <laughs> and 15% of men have never touched a vacuum cleaner. I've never touched a vacuum cleaner. In fact, I've literally no idea how it got up there. <laughs> right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our palace job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. John's team, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Ordinary BBC. It's an extraordinary crisis, isn't it? It's a, it's a crazy thing that's happened. It's just got to the point now where it's, it's impossible for them to regain their trust. Like, for that to happen, Stephen Fry would have to cure cancer live on Strictly. <laughs> you're, you're right, though. According to a poll, um, faith in BBC journalism has dropped 44%. Although I don't know if you can trust that poll because it was conducted by the BBC. <laughs> it's not about that we've lost trust in the BBC, we've lost trust in elements, says she, Mrs. BBC. Yeah, I think it's that, not I'll be honest with you, I don't think anybody's questioning the bakery shows. <laughs> <laughs> just going, really, it. that flan's going to rise like that just because of a bit of yeast? Yeah. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, you're up for the job of Director General. Yes, I've been, uh, I have been asked. You, yes. must be on, you must be on a list. Everyone's on a list. I think you are. You're on it, aren't you? Jimmy's going to be treasurer. <laughs> well, I think it's ridiculous this idea that the BBC have lost trust. If you compare it to, say, News International, when they had uh, a phone hacking, they did mm. their own investigation and they completely covered it up for years to the point where it's, it's caused the, the, the Leveson inquiry, whereas the BBC made a mistake and they went, yeah, we've made mm. a mistake. So I think this is a little bit of a witch hunt here against the BBC, usually by forces that have other purposes on their mind. Well, what do you think <laughs> of the evil Murdoch empire? <laughs> I don't think the BBC have lost trust. I just think they should sack loads of people who don't do their job properly. Yeah. The BBC, fundamentally, as an institution, still works. I mean, Newsnight, basically, they were doing reports based on what was written on bridges. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Give those a nonce. Someone's written, Give those a nonce on a bridge. You go, well, Gibbo must be a nonce then. <laughs> The thing is, is that it doesn't help yourself, the BBC, because you turn it on, it's the lead story in the news. I've been listening to Five Live for the past two weeks, and all they talk about is news night. It's like, fellas, put the gun down and step away. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, the BBC is the state broadcaster, and in Britain there is such a hefty scepticism towards anything to do with state, mm. that the moment there is any shortcomings, everyone just jumps at the opportunity. And uh, so then uh, it is... In, in a way, Britain is the last bastion of communism in Europe. Jimmy! <laughs> 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 I'd like to hear more about why we're the last no. bastion of communism. Because the state's the enemy. Yeah, right. The state is seen as the enemy. I mean, that is... And it's all aspects of the BBC, like, then, then like, little things. Like, they had, oh, Jeremy Paxman, why did he have to fly? In business class, well, he said because he had to get some work done. So in Germany, everyone would accept that, yeah, that's fair enough. Well, it's in Britain, everyone goes, well, he's not going to do any work on them, he's just going to eat peanuts and getting drunk. <laughs> 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 had he gone standard class, everyone would have gone, well, can't he go on the couch? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> had he gone on the couch, why does he take a bicycle? <laughs> What, he walks in them expensive shoes? Can't he walk barefoot? <laughs> <laughs> OK, George M. Whistle. George M. Whistle. So he's in the job 54 days and he was given a full year's salary, £450,000, to leave. David Mellor said he had the leadership qualities of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Which I think 
A man managing Tigger cannot be an easy job. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever been in a meeting with him, I'm, I'm very aware of what the wonderful thing about Tiggers are. <laughs> You've got to get this report finished, and <laughs> well, there'll be plenty of time for bouncy, 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 bouncy. <laughs> Fair enough to, you know, in any other period, I made a bit of a mistake. But when you come in in that environment, and then your argument is, oh, they did a whole Newsnight report on naming paedophiles, and I didn't check it. If I was Director General of the BBC, I would know everything. I would know who won Bargain Hunt every day. <laughs> the meeting's going, who is this Iggle Piggle prick? <laughs> and was left after 54 days. Yeah. I mean, within 54 days, he can't stamp any authority on anything. So, and Newsnight, in a way, they just acted like... Gambling addicts, didn't they? They, they? they had like they had the winning lottery ticket. That was the Seville story. That was the winning lottery ticket, but they lost it in the wash. So they remortgaged the house and bought scratch cards. I don't I don't get the difference, right? Well I do now, I've realized when you resign you get paid. When I worked at B and Q. I got sacked for building an A-team style tank out of <laughs> company materials. <laughs> <laughs> and I stupidly stuck around until they gave me my marching orders. I should have resigned. <laughs> I shot a hole in the wall and fucked off. <laughs> but I didn't, I just kept building. It's funny, he's touched on something which I really wanted to talk about. Really? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, was where Philip Schofield will be working soon. Because I'm really surprised he hasn't had more crap from this. Because that, that, that bit where he, he basically handed the Prime Minister a list of on names morning. of, of yeah. paedophiles. Mm -hmm. Not only did he start, up, start off, well, partially start off this witch hunt, he made the Prime Minister look good. Yeah, well, <laughs> the problem. The Prime Minister looked really together, didn't he? What was yeah. the Prime Minister doing on ITV? Where is he on next? Like, Nuts magazine TV? <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing is, I, remember, I was watching Philip Schofield and I agree with you, I thought he looked ridiculous. Like, oh, I found this in three minutes. That's what Philip Schofield did. Imagine what Richard Madeley would have done. He would have been dressed as Jimmy Savile going, I've written a list on my not. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's have a look and see whether the crisis at the BBC is one of the most talked about things over the last week. <laughs> of course, the most talked about thing. Yes, the BBC is in crisis. I think the BBC will be all right. They've still got Brucey, although it has been cold. <laughs> last Friday, all the top BBC stars did their bit for children in need. Freddie Starr stayed at home and Jimmy Savile remained dead. <laughs> Sean Steen, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it the fact that Abu Qatada, like Peter Andre, won't be going back to Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is the real tragedy. But well, that's the real tragedy. When will she find love? <laughs> <laughs> but on another matter, yes, we can't get rid of Abu Qatada. We can he's, yeah, it's terrible. You can't push him on a plane, you can't drag him onto a boat. <laughs> you do what you do with parents and just send them on a coach holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're going out for the day and you can send them away forever. Hello, Abu Qatada, you're on Channel 4's <laughs> coach trip. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, well, this fella turned up apparently suspected terrorist. <laughs> Can't believe it. <laughs> we put him at the back, he'll be fine, give him some sandwiches and a kind of fizzy pop, he'll be all right. <laughs> Is it true it's going to cost £5 million? Pounds £5 million? Pounds? Well, a that's year. for a whole... That's a year. That's a whole year oh. to keep him in the country, so... <laughs> well, that's not right, unreasonable. Uh, yes, £100,000 a week, because apparently he's watched by uh, 60 police officers yep. and there's cameras and microphones 60. all over his house. 60? 60 police oh, officers. Don't they get in the way of each other? <laughs> Well, I think they're on... What's he doing, running around like a lunatic? <laughs> <laughs> is he just... Is he runs around loads, so it, it costs more money, just because he's going, ah, he can't see me now, can't see me now. <laughs> there he goes. Where is he? Where the fuck is he? Does he... <laughs> he's been filmed all the time in his house. Now, mm. technically, we own that footage, because we're paying for it. Now, he's going to fall over, he's going to stub his toe. <laughs> he should have a one-weekly highlight package. <laughs> Abu's been framed. That's what I'm pitching at us. <laughs> and he's going to be pretty sexually frustrated, I imagine. You've got cameras all over your house. Like, week one's just him getting a bit annoyed. <laughs> then week two, his showers are getting a little bit longer. <laughs> and by week three, he's just looking down the lens going, it's happening now. <laughs> <laughs> you watch if you want, but this is going to finish very angrily. 
<laughs> Little glimpse there into John's world. <laughs> Well, I think that Abu Qatada, he gets a lot of unfair press here in the country. Like, it's always described as the, as the nightmare neighbour. How can that man be a nightmare neighbour? I mean, he's not allowed to leave the house. He's not allowed to have visitors. The police is always on the doorstep. He's an absolutely brilliant neighbour. And also, if you've got a parcel coming, you can say, leave it at Abu. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Or I mean, that probably wasn't. people won't do that for him, though. Yeah, I'll have one of Abu's parts. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's see if Abu Qatada getting released is one of the most talked about things. <laughs> yes, radical Muslim cleric Abu Qatada has been released from prison. The Abu Qatada row has blown up over nothing, as have a lot of Abu Qatada's friends. <laughs> Uh, John Steen, what else does the nation be talking about? There's a new leader of China, and therefore the world, called Xi Jinping, who um, he's been touted as they're saying, oh, he's a very informal leader. And I don't know how you be an informal leader of the country that kills three times more people than anyone else in the world. I mean, you want to do it with a smile on your face, at least. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, seriously, get back to work or I'll kill you all. <laughs> I'm a formal guy, I haven't got a tie on, but I will kill you. I'll shoot you. <laughs> With security during the week long Congress includes uh, they banned kites. Oh. And they stopped taxi passengers from rolling down their windows. <laughs> Did they ban the foul mouthed fan sellers of Shanghai? You go to this main square in Shanghai and there's like, thousands of, of fan sellers and they sell these exquisitely decorated fans, beautiful fans. But when you actually ask to buy a fan or you look at them, the, the fan sellers are notoriously rude. And they just go, what are you fucking looking at? <laughs> they just say, if you want to buy a fucking fan, buy a fucking fan, otherwise fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and who can argue with that? Okay. Yeah. This is from the Congress uh, last week. Uh, one of the Chinese delegates was photographed yawning during the uh, president's speech. Take a look. <laughs> We'd just like to send condolences to his family. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you don't know if he's somewhere from West China, it was probably 14 days on the back of a rickshaw to get there. <laughs> and, and the moment they found out in China, they said, what, on a rickshaw? Who's paying for that? Couldn't he walk? Well, I can tell you, it's not in our top five. But last week, China underwent a once-in-a-decade transfer of political power. China has really changed. It no longer has an autocratic, ruthless, militaristic leader called Hu Jintao. It's now governed by an autocratic, ruthless, militaristic leader called Xi Jinping. <laughs> Sean Vernon, Henry, what else have the nation been talking about? From a sporting perspective, it, it's got to be the fantastic Swedish goal uh, scored by Ibrahimovic against England. Mm. An overhead kick. It's phenomenal. I, I, thought, it was, phenomenal. I thought it was OK. <laughs> Let's have a look at this incredible goal. Phenomenal is he took his top off and he got booked. Oh, yeah, if you score a goal like that, he should have been allowed to take all his clothes off and have sex with a penalty spot. <laughs> <laughs> and we should have all had to just wait until he finished. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you need to take your top off? I, I agree with the ref. The ref's got no choice. It's FIFA, FIFA regulations. He's he has rules, to. isn't it? Rule 17. Yes, exactly. And I'm... <laughs> <laughs> rules are important on the heading. <laughs> now, well, let me tell you that the best goal ever will never ever be scored in a friendly game. Yes, I agree. So, I'll show it on the big stage when it matters. What's the favourite German goal? Anyone we've scored in a World Cup final. <laughs> Their favourite goal is getting hold of Poland. <laughs> Johnny, what's the thing that you're proudest of? Because I imagine that'll be, for the rest of his life, that'll be the moment he's most proud of. For me, genuinely? Like, yeah. You really want to know? Yeah. One time I told the builders to fuck off with a quote. One time you... A builder came round with a quote and I had just opened the door. <laughs> I was in the early stages of pissing myself and I went, just fuck off. 
<laughs> I didn't even discuss it with him. He came round and went, it's going to be about when just fuck off. <laughs> I was in the early stages of pissing myself. <laughs> it's the funniest phrase I've ever yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you open the door, then? <laughs> no, cos he went... Cos, Polite. Cos, right, I actually thought he might have a good quote and I wouldn't mind pissing myself for the... <laughs> <laughs> I actually squeezed the end of my penis and ran to the toilet. <laughs> well, I can tell you it's not up there. <laughs> Swedish striker Slatan Ibrahimovic <laughs> has scored the greatest goal ever against England. This is the most amazing football feat since John Terry managed to persuade a jury that he's not a racist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fingers up, there's three more things to get. What do you think? Uh, I'm a celebrity thing, isn't it? It was, a, it was an incredible thing this week. One of the tasks was one of the girls had to eat an ostrich anus. That must have tasted like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but then the next task, she had to go into an enclosed space with a live ostrich and not exhale. Cos if a live ostrich smells its partner's anus on your breath, <laughs> you are gonna get pecked to death. <laughs> <laughs> The people I think, I really, I, I can't bear on it now, is Ant and Deck, because they're like... It's gone on now, they just laugh. They're like Gaddafi's sons. <laughs> <laughs> laugh at people being tortured. They just laugh, ah, you're being tortured, you're being bitten, you have to eat this. Then they, ah, they have more torture. There's a woman in a coffin having st insects crawling all over her face. They're just going, ha, ha, ha. You can't tire of watching people going, ah, ah, ah. It's just, it just doesn't get boring. Yeah, but it's all the stuff in between where people start going, going, oh, I miss my family. I don't. They throw things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would be incredible on the show if you were ever do. Do they offer it to you? Every year. <laughs> and every year, I happen to be in a supermarket where I can buy stuff and I don't have to beg for it. <laughs> When you're doing your shopping, they go, would you like to do my um, celebrity to get me out of here? Or any of them, and you're going, yeah, but you see, I'm here and I've got nine Twixes and I don't <laughs> have to do a task. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lorraine, would you, would you go on? Absolutely, no way. I like my personal space, do you know what I mean? I don't want all these people around me all the time, getting on my nerves, having to eat anuses and willies. <laughs> it's just not my thing. Oh, it's a shame. I... <laughs> 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 Let's see if I'm celebrity is up there. <laughs> yeah, the sign of celebrity continues. I'm not saying the celebrities this year are unknown, but they were asked to turn up with a utility bill and two other forms of ID. <laughs> <laughs> Previous winners include Joe Pasquale, Phil Tofnell, Tony Blackburn, and Christopher Biggins. And if you want to see all those winners together, head to the Marlowe Theatre in Canterbury for Puss in Boots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fingers on buzzers, two more things to get. What do you think? Uh, is it the story about Frankie didn't mean this to rhyme? Frankie Tatori. No, it's a story yeah. about Frankie Tatori. Fun time, Frankie. Been, and there's rumours that he will be soon charged for uh, cocaine in the French, uh, some French race meeting. Yes, uh, he's, uh, he's certainly been accused of uh, taking cocaine. He, uh, Fra uh, Frankie has not admitted taking cocaine as yet. I'm not a big horse racing fan. I don't really like it. As far as I'm concerned, it's just an excuse to give short people jobs. <laughs> Why don't jockeys ever do panto? It's weird, isn't it? Do you think they had an agreement with the dwarves? <laughs> they met up in a car park late at night <laughs> with weapons, they had like clubs and, and knives and spanners. And they went, OK, OK, you don't ride horses, we won't do panto. I <laughs> said, <laughs> <laughs> an agreement. <laughs> What annoys me about people who get caught doing drugs is loads of people do drugs and they just do drugs, but then when celebrities and special athletes get caught, they describe it as a moment of madness. It wasn't a moment of madness when you decided you wanted some cocaine, you went and bought some cocaine, and then you did the cocaine. <laughs> so, I'll show you a moment of madness. If you want to see a moment of madness? <laughs> <laughs> That's what a moment of madness looks like. Call that a moment of madness. Go on then. Go on then. I don't want to be in the papers for killing you. <laughs> Me if... killing you and trying to eat your hair. <laughs> Lauren, what do you think of Frankie Dottori? Do you, I mean, do you think it's ever acceptable for sportsmen to take recreational drugs? No, of course not. I, mean, I know he does it to stay slim. It's oh. not performance-enhancing, though, is it? You well, know, I suppose like... it is. Well, it is, because cause... the horse well, you is going to the... go faster if you're, light, really? if you're lighter. Really? <laughs> well, I love the way you've explained that, because now uh, I know why I was never a jockey. <laughs> <laughs>
That was the RSPCA, Johnny. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> if he wants to lose weight by taking cocaine, he can't have taken the same cocaine that Maradona took. Maradona <laughs> 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 just got fatter and fatter and fatter. He's the only man, Maradona's the only man I've ever seen with a cocaine belly. <laughs> <laughs> Maradona's problem was he wasn't taking pure cocaine, he was cutting it with utterly butterly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he'd have cut it with flora, which is 95% less saturated fat <laughs> than olive oil, <laughs> he wouldn't have had that problem. OK, let's see if Frankie Dottori is one of the most talked about things. <laughs> yes, jockey Frankie Dottori has failed a drugs test. They first suspected he may have taken cocaine when he won the 320 at Epsom without a horse. <laughs> OK, one more thing to get. Fingers on buzzers. <laughs> OK, John, what do you think? Well, I imagine it's the news that's rocking teenage boys everywhere, um, and it's the release of the new Call of Duty computer game. <laughs> <laughs> There's a girl at the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, say, you say teenage boys, but this, this last year, the games market in the UK was worth £1.92 billion. Pounds. Queued up overnight, like, four, overnight, for four days, thank you. Four days. Camping out. Would you ever camp out for four days? For what, for the game? game? Yeah. What would you camp out four days for? Brain trainer! New <laughs> 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 edition! <laughs> I'd camp out for four days if I was going camping. <laughs> I read a sentence, like, oh, the great thing about this game is you can live stream multiplayer games in real time to YouTube. Took me longer to understand that sentence than it will for them to complete the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> what that basically implies is that you could watch other people playing a computer game online. <laughs> people are actually going to log on and go, what are you doing? I'm watching a Peruvian kid play a Russian kid at a shooting game. I'm leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is also got Nazi zombies in it, apparently. It's got Nazi zombies? Yeah, so, and I'm not sure where they come in or how they come in. I mean... I mean, if something's risen from the grave and is about to eat my brain, I don't really care about their ideology. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing a Japanese gentleman at FIFA and he didn't speak any English throughout the whole contest. It was me versus him. He beat me 9-0. 9-0. And all the way through, he was talking Japanese. And at the end, when I said, well, thank you very much, I got a, a, a well and... Truly deserves spanking, and he just said, Hey, Mr. English, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. Wow. <laughs> yes, the new Call of Duty computer game has been released. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 is the most exciting, futuristic, slick, engrossing, brutal, Hollywood-produced reason you're still a virgin at 30 ever. <laughs> So those were the most talked about things this week. Uh, but in other news, the CIA has been rocked by revelations that its chief, General Petraeus, had an affair. General Petraeus was betrayed by private emails. Private emails is now facing court-martial. <laughs> this is the most disappointing thing to happen in the American espionage community since Brody's wife stopped getting her norks out in Homeland. <laughs> The Church of England have announced the Bishop of Durham is to become the new Archbishop of Canterbury. He's made up, as is his religion. <laughs> so, at the end of that, Sean Henning and Vernon have two points, John Lorraine and Johnny have three points. Ooh. So, that's it for one, see you after the break. Pick of the polls, Sean Henning Vernon, your turn first. What do you fancy, Henning? Come on, the bloke there in the top left hand corner. Okay, so the old man covering his ears. Okay, here's your related question. Most British people judge others by their accent, true or false? What, what do you think, Henning? Do, do you think people judge you? Because you've got a bit of an accent, haven't you? I've got a bit of an accent. <laughs> Definitely, there is a certain degree of judgment. I recently did a gig up in Bolton and I got heckled with that wonderful line Fuck off back to London. <laughs> Listening to Chaz and Dave finally paid off. <laughs> 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 
Sean, what, what do you think? Do you think British people judge others on their accent? Oh, well, I mean, I judge people long before they've opened their mouths. So. <laughs> <laughs> Saves a lot of time, doesn't straight it? Straight in there. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's interesting because, yeah, everyone, you know, there's, there's a bit, there's a sort of, what's the word, a contingency in your voice and it moves around and it can, you can change certain things. But the only really way you know how someone speaks is when they sneeze. And that's their true, the true voice. You can't put on a sneeze. I was walking down the street and I lived in East London and um, there was this old Cockney walking along in front of me, like this. <laughs> <laughs> like and then he was building up to a sneeze and he actually went, eh. 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 That's a Cockney sneeze. You couldn't put that on. <laughs> no, you couldn't. That's a natural. That's a natural noise. My wife does a terrible thing. She doesn't give you any warning. She's no. She just goes. <laughs> 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 There's There's no, uh, uh, nothing. No warning. Just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> <laughs> that means shot. <laughs> Johnny, do you think anyone ever judges you by your accent? Yeah, of course you do. It's not your accent, Johnny. <laughs> it's the bollocks you talk. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I'm just by my accent because there's certain letters, there's certain uh, vowels that I miss out. If there's whole words you miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, sorry, Jimmy, <laughs> when I run over you later. <laughs> John, 81% of people admit changing their voice depending on who they're talking to you. Do you do that? You change your accent? No, James. <laughs> <laughs> I acquire accents quite quickly. And if I do gigs, if I go to a town, I instantly start thinking in the voice of where I am. Does that not sound like you're taking the piss, though? Exactly. <laughs> if I've been doing gigs in Newcastle and you sort of go to a club after and you go, oh, cheers, me, it's... And it's, oh, fuck. <laughs> the shit kicked out of me. But I can't, I'm no good at accents, but I can do them if I've got key phrases. So if I'm trying to do Scouse, right. if I'm trying to do a Liverpool accent, I have to say, I want some chicken and a can of hoch. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's not bad, Before I can start. And Bel I can do Belfast, but only if I say, Ginger and community. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you think? Let's get some answers on this. Most Brits judge people by their accent. True or false? What do you think, Sean? Definitely. True. You're going to go yeah, true? Sure. What, what are you going to say, John? True. I can tell you the answer is false. Only 25% of Brits say they judge people by their accents. That will be. <laughs> Over generations, our accents become hardwired into our brains. For example, Chinese people find it difficult to pronounce R's, Germans struggle with W's, and girls from Essex find it almost impossible to say no. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, John, what, what do you like the look of? Should you have the, the garçon, the waiter? The waiter? OK, you come for the waiter. We asked our studio audience, what do you prefer, home cooking or fancy restaurants? I'll be home cooking. It's got to be home it's cooking. It's got to be home cooking, otherwise I'm out of a job. How many of the recipes that you've cooked on telly do you think people have done at home? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? I watch your shows, <laughs> but I don't bake muffins. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I've done one of the dishes. No, look. <laughs> People cook, he cuts my recipes. Oh, people cut my recipes. Oh, yes. I've made of uh, uh, recipes. What does that and say? They're lovely. I mean, the thing is, I don't think it's about fancy restaurants anymore, is it? People don't really like fancy restaurants. They want some like nice home cooking or just a neat, like a steakhouse or something. Okay, well, John, what's your? How do you cook at home? How do you prepare a meal? Oh, you spend your afternoon with a little bottle of wine, doing your prep, don't you? Get it all in your little bowls and your jars. Do you really? You spend the whole day cooking it? Absolutely. And don't have people around either, they'll ruin it. <laughs> pesto. I make the best pesto going. <laughs> I, I should have it in jars in restaurants. No, he was very proud. He told me about his pesto he cooked, and he's very proud of his pesto. Give him on the fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach him how to make pesto, he'll end up with a massive company. <laughs> Some people call it fancy restaurants the difference, but some people, like, you know, who eat at KFC, going to Nando's is like, ooh. <laughs> Nando's is basically KFC for people who can use a knife and fork, isn't it? <laughs> well, we asked our audience, what do you prefer, home cooking or fancy restaurants? What are you going to go for, John? What would you Home like? cooking. Home cooking. You think home cooking and you mm. th and Sean, you're going to go for restaurants, right? Yeah, agree. we go for restaurants. Yeah, yeah, bring me restaurants. OK, well, I can tell you, 64% uh, of our studio audience preferred home cooking to uh, restaurants. 
I still like my roast chicken exactly the way my mum served it, in a furious silence after a huge argument with my dad. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's three points to Sean's team, four points for John's team. <laughs> That's it for part two. See you after the break. Welcome back to 8 Out of 10 Cats, and the winner is, is the name of our final round, and here is your question. Worst thing about guests staying overnight? The worst thing about guests staying overnight is with, with me, that when, in the morning, they expect this big fry-up, right? They want bacon, eggs, the whole yeah. works, because they just think I'm going to cook all the time, but for me, I'm like, shreddy milk, then sling it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I'm going to get. It's when you wake up at breakfast, <laughs> and they're in the kitchen already, and you think, <laughs> Who let you out? I bolted that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean, do you ever have people over to stay? Oh, God, I love it. Guests, my house is just open house. It's just... <laughs> I have constantly have at least four pianists staying in my house just to keep the... It's like New Orleans. It's great. <laughs> it's just I'm just cooking and people... Yeah, I do. I like, I like having people around. Trouble is, it's persuading them to stay. <laughs> <laughs> but you are always exhausted after, aren't you? Yeah. Because, I mean, whenever I've got guests over, you always there is that degree of exhaustion because you feel that degree of responsibility. Also, you're not sure in your own house you've lost track of what is considered tidy and what is not tidy. <laughs> you think, yeah, well, there might be a broken window, but as long as the pigeons don't fly in, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, John, do you ever have people stay over? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, well, the worst thing is knowing that you're looking after them better than they look after you. You put up to give them clean bedding and I'll put a bed out and I'll cook them breakfast. And then you go around their house and they open up some cupboard and pull out this sticky, horrible sleeping bag that they've had for 15 years. <laughs> and every rank mate they've ever had to come round, yeah? We just seal them up in this at night so they're sweating their feet, really must <laughs> And then they just pull it out for you and they go, oh, why don't we just share bath water and, you know, not <laughs> flush the toilet either. And then when they come around mine, I do them a little duvet and a little put the bed out and a clean pillow. And then just sometimes I think, oh, sod off. <laughs> didn't bother coming round. And then they leave and I think, oh, actually, I wish they'd stayed. <laughs> I mean, I imagine, Johnny, you're pretty much a perfect house guest. No, no, no. My worst thing... I, I can say he really is. He my really worst is. thing about people staying over is pointing out that your house is not a house, it's an abandoned school and you're a squatter. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's family were on Family Fortune and they won uh, a jacuzzi. So I would imagine that if you're a guest at Johnny's house, you can nip next door. My brother won a jacuzzi, but he's still living with my mum and dad. Oh, really? <laughs> so it, it wasn't a big bonus. Did yeah. they plumbed it in yet? Have they, have they plumbed no, it in? No, he sold it. He sold it. <laughs> <laughs> he sold it. <laughs> and he bought loads of cider. <laughs> The, the thing is, the dimensions of the jacuzzi were exactly the same as Johnny's brother's backyard. <laughs> so it wasn't just... his backyard, it was his parents! <laughs> <laughs> and you gave him a jacuzzi. What more tells a man that he's going nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> so we had to sell it. And when we sold it and he got the money, he got really drunk. He had two fights in the park. <laughs> and he bought me a fucking kite! Which meant I couldn't vote in the Chinese elections. <laughs> it genuinely did. He bought me a cake. I've never had a headache on exactly half of my head before. <laughs> Okay. Worst thing about guests staying overnight? The other thing is, when you stay at someone's house and they don't tell you straight away what the weird things about their house are, just say, you cannot flush the toilet unless you stand on that floorboard and sing Oklahoma. Because <laughs> otherwise you're in there at 3 o'clock in the morning, still trying... And you know they can hear you. They heard you the first time when it didn't quite flush. <laughs> they didn't come out, they just left you in there all night, pulling the thing, and, oh, I had to wait a little bit longer, but now it's empty again. I've got to stand in here for 20 more friggin' minutes trying to flush this piss away when I had an half-an-hour debate whether it was ruder to leave the piss in but not wake them up with a flush, and now I've pulled the flush. You asked the fucking question. <laughs> Because you're quite fastidious. I imagine you don't like people using your stuff. I don't mind them when I give them stuff. Don't help yourself to stuff. I mean, make yourself at home, that's a cliche, isn't it? You say it, but you don't mean it. Like, <laughs> say make yourself at home and someone starts making themselves a cup of tea, you think, well, they, what are 
are you doing? <laughs> Get out of my cupboards. That's not where the tea's kept. Right, I'll make you a cup of tea. When I said make yourself at home, I meant sit down and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the, um, uh, the mess? That's basically it, yeah. Clearing Bathroom. up after them, I'll give you that, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> good job. Good job, good job. Yes, the worst thing about having guests staying over is cleaning up after them. Everyone's welcome at my house as long as they take their shoes off at the front door and then put them straight back on and fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean Henning and Vernon have four points, John Lorraine and Johnny have four points. It's a dead heat. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> our wonderful studio audience and all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. show all about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, over 1.6 million Britons still live at home with their parents? And we call those people children. <laughs> it takes giraffes up to an hour to have sex, but most of that is necking. <laughs> and 65% of people think Britain is a great place to live. And that's a survey of people hanging on to the undercarriage of the Eurostar. <laughs> What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to get to the British public's top five most talked about stories from the last year. Um, Sean, Stephen, Catherine, what do you think the nation have been talking about over the last year? What's, what's the most important thing? The Olympics. Yes. Perhaps the Olympics. The Olympics. The... Pretty huge. It's, it was a very successful Olympics, but for me, it almost, it was too successful. <laughs> go, on, go on, no, tell me. Yeah. I've, got, I've got some theory now because for Bradley Wiggins, he also won the Tour de France. Andy Murray's finally won something. Oh. Yeah. You know, it, it's like we're too good at sport. <laughs> We've got nothing to moan about, yeah. <laughs> well, it's just not, you know, not comfortable with that level of success and sense of pride and, uh, and, and celebration. It just doesn't, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> It was quite surprising, wasn't it, when the, when the old opening ceremony started, that it was actually quite good? <laughs> that opening procession at the Olympics, because they do it in alphabetical order, goes Iraq, <laughs> Iran, Ireland, Israel. That is a tough gig for the Irish. <laughs> 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 no wonder they've developed a sense of humour in Ireland. That is a tough tunnel, that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just calm down a minute and just, <laughs> <laughs> just look straight ahead and not talk for five minutes. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the... Uh, obviously, they did the, uh, the relay with the torch before it all kicked off. And then they rang bells. Did you see this? They rang bells all around the country to sort of mm -hmm. mark the start of it. And Jeremy Hunt kicked it off. Here he is. Can we get a ring on the Yes, sure. Oh! Here oh, <laughs> 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 we are. We did a terrible moment there. Oh, no. Health and safety. Are you OK? How many men can genuinely get to say they've said to a woman, could you pass me my bell end? It's just on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you watch the Olympics? Did you... I watched some of it. 
I was away on holiday, so... I think a lot of people did go away. A lot of people left London, got out of it, because it was... Like, beforehand, everyone was so negative. Everyone thought this was going to be a disaster, and then it yeah. turned out it was fine. My wife's still crying. About it? <laughs> From the Olympics, she's not stopped crying yet. <laughs> I'm Olympics. hoping it will stop at some point. You think that's the Olympics? It was the Olympics. It was the, the levels of yeah. emotion, yeah. Oh, Twice I... I had to fill her up with water. She's <laughs> <laughs> just dehydrated there, um, you know. <laughs> you know what I find? I find it has to be said... Uh, and I don't like saying it because everyone likes me, he's a really nice bloke, but the Mobot is shit, isn't it? I... <laughs> really embarrassing. It's rubbish. That, the Usain Bolt thing is brilliant. Yeah. Super cool. That is just rubbish. Oh, let's, let's have a look, let's have a look. This is, this is Mo. It's rubbish. Uh -uh. It's like a crap, someone who doesn't know how to do a teapot. It looks like... <laughs> it looks like this a... is embarrassing. Well, how like is that? This... Like, those are the balls and then he's the big shaft. <laughs> You know, like, big balls. Big balls. Let's have a look and see if the Olympics is up there. Of oh, course. Of course. The most talked about thing. Yes, London hosted the Olympics in 2012. The Olympics may be over, but we'll never forget the volunteers and all the hard work they did for free. Not with the way they keep fucking going on about it. <laughs> John, what do you think the nation should be talking about over the last year? Well, who could forget the wonderful weekend when the economy contracted by £6 billion? Pounds? Uh, or the Diamond Jubilee, as it was called. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a good look at an old woman. She didn't smile once. <laughs> I quite enjoyed the Jubilee. This is oh, what you I had did. to be careful with, you I know, did. because you started talking to people reasonably and saying, have you all seen this shit on the TV? And, like, what sort of idiot goes to Mosher Flotilla? And they sort of go... We were there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we, got there, we, we got there two days earlier, we camped out. <laughs> and you have to backtrack and go, well, yes, I'm idiot. No, you're idiot. for everybody, Did you, did you enjoy know. it? Because I'll tell you who didn't really get into it. I'll tell you who was about as big a fan as John is. It was Eamon Holmes. Have a look at his coverage of the flotilla. Right. You see, the thing is, we could, we could give you all the false bonhomie, we can tell you the truth that you're looking to head out today. Truthfully, you're going to have to be dedicated to be here today. I mean, it's not just wet today, it's not just cold, it is abysmally wet and cold. You know, all these people are so very, very happy, it is unbelievable. I just wish a few of these boats would now put the foot down, like, come on, very nice, but let's just get a bit of speed up here. It is cold, it is wet, it is windy, it is dark, it is dank. You're a Canadian, aren't you? So she's your queen as well. She's on all my money. So how do you feel about the queen? I love the queen. I got a lot of time for the queen. She is a down-ass chick. I really like her. I think she's really, really lovely. I think you're having a breakdown. <laughs> See, no, I turned 40 four years ago. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> I was going to say recently it wasn't, four years ago. I, yes, I've turned... Something weird's gone. It's fine though. I'm at ease with it. It's all right. Is everyone else? You seem very happy. Yeah, no, very, very, very happy. All well, the good. queen, the queen knows it all. She can do it all. The queen sent an email in 1976. David Cameron just got Twitter like a month ago and has yeah. fewer followers than Jodie Marsh. Too right. <laughs> I really, really, really enjoyed the jubilee. But what? <laughs> I had, I had um, daily oh. boppers. <laughs> I had daily boppers. I made cakes. I had bunting, I had a wicker hamper. This is not I the actions of a happy person. <laughs> Come to my party, I've made a cake. <laughs> Laughter and joy <laughs> and pleasure. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, the Queen celebrated her Diamond Jubilee in 2012. The Queen got silver for her silver jubilee and diamonds for her diamond jubilee. I think we all know what she's getting for our next jubilee, a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you've gone too far with that. She is. <laughs> oh, she's she never going to die. She's never going to die. <laughs> Don't say it, Jimmy. Don't say it. <laughs> Beast! <laughs> Sean Steen, what else have the nation been talking about over the last year? Crisis at the BBC. Yes. Crisis at the BBC. Tell me more. Well, we all know that there's been a crisis at the BBC and it's been in crisis for some time. <laughs> and this crisis is a continuing crisis, which has affected <laughs> the entire BBC. So, I mean, Newsnight were in crisis. Initially, they failed to report on Jimmy Savile and then they reported that Lord McAlpine was a paedophile when he wasn't. Um, Newsnight, George Entwistle, 40, 54 days in the job as Director-General. Yeah. He, he hadn't even found the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> 
54 days in the job, he yeah, got 450. 450,000 450, 450, pounds. Grand. For how long? 54, 54 days. days. That's a lot of fucking money, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, for 54 days, that's not bad. Yeah, not not bad. bad going. The BBC had to give Lord McAlpine uh, a... 185,000 pounds. Yeah, as an apology, they should just introduce a not a paedophile bonus at the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe kind of like an incentive scheme. Yeah. Look, what I need to know is who, out of all of our beloved 70s icons, children presenters, who was clean? Because everything, <clears throat> even like you look at Sutty now, you think we. <laughs> Sue always had two black eyes. No, she didn't. <laughs> Sweet full name was Sweep It Under the Carpet. <laughs> and that rainbow house. <laughs> Well, come on. Well, they they, so, they <laughs> sewed a zip in so that they could shut him up. Because <laughs> of what Bungle had done. <laughs> well, there's, there's lots of rumours about different presenters, but there's one person I know is not involved in any of it at all. It can't be. It's John Craven, because he's a country file. <laughs> There is an interesting point to be made about how times change, and it's about perspective. And, uh, and in the 70s, there was a thing called wandering hand trouble. Yeah. You go, oh, he's got a case of wandering hand trouble. It's almost like he had the <laughs> flu or something. So, just occasionally, he goes... <laughs> it's an illness. Basically, Jim will fix it with his way of saying sorry. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yeah. Yes, the BBC was rocked in 2012 by revelations that Jimmy Savile was a paedophile and Lord McAlpine wasn't. The Savile scandal is obviously terrible, but on the upside, I'm not going to be the worst Jimmy this year. Get him. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 Out of 10 Cats. We're trying to guess the most talked about things over the last year. OK, Johnstein, what else have the uh, nation been talking about over the last year? Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a seance, man. <laughs> <laughs> what have the nation been talking about over the last year? <laughs> just really hurt my head. <laughs> 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 John, what have the nation been talking about over the last year? Uh, well, it can't all be fun, can it? The mm. levers and the. Uh, <gasps> <laughs> What's good is that it cost millions of pounds and took a year, and his conclusion was hey, keep an eye on them. <laughs> <laughs> One of his comments was like a Yoda thing. He said, Who should guard the guardians? Not no one. <laughs> Might as well have commissioned Yoda. Who should look after him? Not no one. <laughs> well, poss possibly someone then. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Waste of money. <laughs> or is he more like a Dalek? He does. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I like the way we get getting to the heart of the issue <laughs> here. <laughs> 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 he said like this. <laughs> Right. He might as well have come out on the steps and just said, instead of having to go at the press in any way, he should have just said, celebrities, royals, behave yourselves. Yeah. Mm. And that way, he'd have said, we don't even need to report on you. <laughs> None of this would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> What gave you that gas? But I'm sure no. I look forward to reading about it in the papers. No, no, no. It was, it was doing the Dalek. It was doing the Dalek. I'm really sorry. It was going and it brought it brought up something really weird. Is this because you can't do this sort of stuff on British Bake Off? <laughs> you can't do in the judging of a cake. You can't go. <laughs> 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 Can I, I'm so sorry. No, no, no problem at all. <laughs> okay. Can I just confirm that I will not be pulling your finger at any stage <laughs> during the show? That's OK. That's my favourite thing that's ever happened while I've been on the show. Yeah. <laughs> one, of the, one of the recommendations he made was more Gaviscon for celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Mm. It's incredible that he still... <laughs> Mel's about to make a serious point. There's no way. <laughs> no, there's yourselves. no way you can... <laughs> Though it happened to so many people, this hacking business. How it must be, but it must be quite easy to do. So, how do you hack someone's call? How do you do it? It's obviously quite easy. How do you do? How do you do it? My dad used to hack into my calls back in the 1970s by lifting the receiver on the other phone in the house with his talons. So I'd. Be... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he's a griffin. I'd be, oh, oh, I'd be downstairs on the trim phone in the hall, <laughs> and my d I'd be going. Your dad would be on his perch. And so... <laughs> 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 and my dad would then lift said receiver and on the beige phone upstairs and say, "Look, get off the phone now. You've been on it for sixty minutes. You saw your pals at school. Why do you need to speak to them after school?" I would go, "Look, Dad, I'm just having a little chat." That was hacking. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but no, what the point I'm making is, so many people, loads of ruddy people have been hacked. Yeah. How do you do it? I don't want to do it myself, but how do you do it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I can tell you it's not one of the most talked about things, but yes, the Levinson inquiry was all over the papers. After thousands of hours, hundreds of witnesses and millions of pounds, the Levinson inquiry came to one inescapable conclusion. Piers Morgan is a <laughs> <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, two more to get. Sean. Is it the Jimmy Carr tax scandal? <laughs> <laughs> On this show, it definitely would be, <laughs> but not generally. Um, it's the, the, the guy who jumps from space. <gasps> oh, Felix Baumgartner. No, amazing thing. He, he, he was on the very, very edge of space, and he, he parachuted all the way to... Was it 26 miles? 23 miles, wasn't it? 23. Very impressive. It was it not impressive. impressive. It's not the most extreme thing an Austrian's ever done, though, is it? All he did was... <laughs> <laughs> We should take a moment to remember all the animals that they tried with first. <gasps> <laughs> Stop it. You don't just do that, do you? I went outside my house weeks ago and uh, there was a little cat, I thought it had been run over, and I went over, it had a little red pull backpack on. <laughs> a little pair of goggles on it, like that. <laughs> What's one of the interesting things is he is getting married, and I was thinking, imagine the job of organising his stag do. Oh, he uh, said yes. to him, We're going paintballing. <coughs> he goes, Paintballing? <laughs> I want to go to the bloody centre of the earth. <laughs> okay, let's have a look and see if it's up there. <sighs> well done. Yes, Daredevil Felix Baumgartner became the first human to break the sound barrier after free falling from the edge of space. Red Bull backed some incredibly <laughs> dangerous challenges. Their next project will be to sponsor John Terry to ride a float through the Notting Hill Carnival. <laughs> OK, one more thing to get. Fingers on buzzers. John. Royals, a lot of royals. Oh, nudie royals this year, aren't they? Oh, nudie royals? Well, nudie royals is definitely a big thing. It's Kate Middleton. The way they wrote it up in the French paper was like, uh, Kate was offering her breasts to the... To the Provencal sun. Provencal sunshine. <laughs> so what's worse, her being photographed from the street, topless in the south of France, or Harry in a, in a private hotel room in Vegas? Well, what's worse is that he did it playing strip... Billiards. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what an arsehole. <laughs> Nobody plays billiards. I like a bit of strip kaplunk, don't get me wrong. <laughs> That's a good guess. Kind of all or nothing. Strip mousetrap is the crazy one. Yeah. <laughs> strip test cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Five days just to get the vest off. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think the royal nudies should be celebrated. I think they should bring out some commemorative stamps. <laughs> Norks, Nadgers, Nips and Nunus. <laughs> and you, you can collect the whole set. <laughs> if you've got royal ginger royal nuts, set. though, you go, I'm not licking that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you make of the, the royals? Do you like them? I've seen them in a pub. 
Where do you, where do you drink? <laughs> it was Harry and, uh, and William. And we're just having a pleasant drink, and you could see them, and I was like, it's the royal family. Were they then, roped off in any way? No, not even just... just... They were surrounded by a couple of bodyguards and a few, a few young people having a nice time, and then I just heard, watch me do the crab! <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then <laughs> Prince William, on my mother's life, may God strike me down now, just bust into the crab. <laughs> Sweet! They need bodyguards all the time. Prince Harry's like a toddler, isn't he? He's like playing soldiers, and then you turn around, he's got no pants on, running around. Like, oh, look, he thinks he's a Nazi. Get the camera, he'll sleep tonight. He's <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's have a look if Royal Nudes is up there. Yowzers. Yes, the royals were photographed in several compromising positions in 2012. Naked photos of Prince Harry were published following his trip to Vegas. You know what they say, what happens in Vegas stays in pages 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 of The Sun. <laughs> so, those were the most talked about things over the past year. But in other news, in May, Andy Murray won his first Grand Slam. The Scots haven't celebrated that hard since discovering you could get drunk on hand sanitizer. <laughs> And I hit the headlines in June. When I got the message the papers had been calling, I jumped into action, started hitting my laptop with a hammer and digging up the patio. And then I found out it was something about tax. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Sean, Catherine and Stephen have three points, John, Mel and Mickey have two points. <laughs> That's it for part two. See you after the break. Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. Our next round is Pick of the Polls. Sean, Catherine and Stephen, your turn first. What do you like the look of? Well, I think we have to pick the picture of Stephen oh. here. OK. So that's you playing uh, Al Capone there in Boardwalk Empire. How did you get the part? Because there are actors in Chicago. I know. It's, it's <laughs> weird, to be honest with you. I've done a film a few years ago called... Um, Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York, yeah. With Martin Scorsese. And he said, I'll work with you again one day. So I, I was like, you know, you can't say that to me and not do it. And... One day I was in the house, me and the missus just having a cup of tea and the phone went. And I was like, hello, and he went, how are you doing, kid? And I was like, yeah, yeah I'm okay, I'm okay. Uh, well, are you working? I went, no, no, I'm not busy at the minute. Okay, I want you to play Al Capone. I went, okay, what? He went, yeah, 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 I was, I'll see, you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, okay, he said, I'll see you in a few weeks. And I went, and the missus went, what the fuck was that? Yeah. <laughs> I went, it's incredible. I think he wants me to play Al Capone. <gasps> It's one of, it's one of, I mean, he's such a, you know, it's, a, it's such a tough guy character. Here's your related uh, question. Most women are more attracted to a geek than a tough guy, true or false? <gasps> what do you think, Catherine? I think we want the same thing men want. It's like a lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets. I want, like, a sister. <laughs> Sorry, what was that that we want? A, la a lady in the streets? You don't even know what you want. Men. <laughs> <laughs> men want, no, I think you've just nailed exactly what I want. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> a lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets. Yes. I want the opposite. Really? I want someone that will go straight off to sleep and then be mental in the street. I want them now. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, because men sort of want a, a woman who can cook and clean and look after the children. That's it, really. <laughs> Read the question, it's tough, yeah. guy. And here's why I think, right? Because yeah. if you are nice all the time, then the lady will notice when you are not nice. So if you bring a lady flowers every day and then one day you forget, she'll be like, where's my friggin' flowers? Yeah. If you're an <laughs> arsehole, then all you've got to do is not be an arsehole for a, for day. a day. And she's like, oh, Steve's really trying. <laughs> I don't think he's stolen from my purse this week. <laughs> Every now and then I, I forget to take Downton Abbey for my wife just to let her know he's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most important thing a woman wants in a man, you know, is, is where he puts towels. That seems to be an obsession. <laughs> so you guys know about the towel thing. But I don't understand it. I don't understand why that's a particular... Every single woman I know, every single relationship I know about, that's an issue. Why a towel can cause so much pain and misery. It's a sign... Oh, now I've, now I've become the woman in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean It's now? not about the towel, Sean. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> towel represents. Do you know what it says to me, Sean? You've got out of the shower and you thought, yeah, I'll let John get that towel. <laughs> you know what you're doing in this... my bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Picking your towels up, that's what I'm doing, young man. <laughs> But no, the towel is just a, it's a very visible, wet, stinking gesture that says, don't care where that goes. No, but the I'm towel... not, John, I'm not talking about leaving towels. No, I, I'm at a totally different level. I'm there and they're not on the, the, in the right place. You just hang them up somewhere, but oh. like a door. Just hang it over a door, yeah. like that. Like a little flag, like a symbol. I'm, I'm not... Sean's I'm... in that room, probably. Mm. Yeah. Well, he's been in there recently. <laughs> I've made it. <laughs> it's worse, though, hanging it on a door, cos that says, I understand the process of hanging this up. I just choose to put it somewhere it's going to piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, get, let's get back to tough guys versus geeks. Let's take a look at uh, an example of a tough guy, an example of a geek. OK, so we've got there Jason Statham, tough guy, Ugh. and Brian Cox, who's kind of the geek's geek. Oh, gimme Cox, definitely. Yeah, but say... <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some answers on this. So, most women are more attracted to a geek than a tough guy. True or false? What are you going to go for? I don't know. You, you, you're a lady. You decide. I think a good woman is attracted to a geek. I think most women are attracted to a tough guy. So, you're going good false. Answer. You're saying most, most women are attracted to a tough false. guy. What, what are you going to go for, John? No, I, I think young women are attracted to tough men, but the minute they grow up a little bit and realise the mortgage has got to be paid, yeah. and, <laughs> you know, the kids have got to be walked and all that, they come round the and they go... have got to be walked? <laughs> You know, like their pets. Yeah. <laughs> Guy sending him out on his own, and he stops at the end of the path, and I go, "Go on." <laughs> and he goes, "I'm only six, and I go, <laughs> and he goes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, I would say that most women go for the geeky guy eventually. I think you're right, Mickey. John, what do you think? I don't care what you think, because I'm a tough guy. <laughs> it's false. OK, I can tell you the answer is false. 56% of women are more attractive to tough guys. <laughs> John Steen, uh, what do you like the look of? John, John, John. Cake. Cake. Okay. Cake. We would like the three differently toned cakes. OK, um, here's a clip from the Great British Bake Off to illustrate your question. Oh, hello. Is your it is. Strudel it's dough. Yep. Made with um, plain flour, made sunflower. Made with plain flour, much easier to roll out. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Is that needed? Is that what you is do? That... No, that's not what I've been doing. It's the speed that stretches it quick, is it? It's decent dough. Do you say what you're grabbing it and twisting it? Grab and twist, Just mate. grab and twist and flick. Yeah, try it. Grab and twist and then slap right and toss. Right over here. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it by the end and flick it. This is horrible. No, no, that looks really good so far that you can... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin! Oh, my God! Oh, it's oh, my so God. hairy. Oh, I am so sorry. Don't throw it away. It's Can't really you see nice. The carpet in we'll it. take the carpet out. Wrap it in put it onto the It's got green carpet in it. I'm not serving Mary Berry oh, green carpet. <laughs> Uh, here's your related question. Right. Most people think cookery shows make it look too easy. True or false? False. False, Jimmy. Move on. False. Three. <laughs> look, I'll tell you this, OK? In GBB30... No, GBBO... GBBO3, Great British Bake Off 3, that's what we say. Quicker, just to say know. it, I think, if you don't. <laughs> John, who did really, really well and actually won GBBO3, he made the Colosseum, the Collar Ruddy Seam, out of gingerbread. <laughs> have, you, have you tried to cook food yes. in the real world? Yes. Let's talk it through. OK. First of all, you've got to go and buy it. <laughs> yeah. Then you've got to cut it up. <laughs> then you've got to cook it. Yeah. How is that easy? <laughs> and what part, what part of that... And then you've got to apologise no, to the people you served it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you look in the cupboard and you think, I don't have any of this shit in this book. <laughs> stuff to get on with, you know. Oh, some capsicum seeds. What? <laughs> <laughs> Where? When? Most people in their cupboard have got a, a tin of fish or something, <laughs> a tin of baked beans that have been sold to you, they were multi-pack only, but you let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just chaotic. 
you know, and you ain't got the pan that you need, you're trying to get the fish, you're cutting its head off, and then you're eating it with an hammer, <laughs> and, you know, and you get the broccoli, and you, you, you're not allowed to sweep people's Don't faces worry. with it, because they don't like it. <laughs> All the time, what is in the hallway? A takeaway menu. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, the Great British Bake Off is obviously it's an incredibly popular show, and apparently baking has become much more popular as a result of it. Yeah. I watched it all. Here's my favourite ever clip. Okay. Let's be yeah. honest with you. Your name will ring forever. So let's start with Mary. <laughs> oh, sorry, can we get our way from there? <laughs> Sounds a bit disconcerting. <laughs> It's amazing. How... Do, I mean, how... <laughs> how? <laughs> that squirrel is a worldwide internet sensation now. Is the it? nuts. Yeah. Those nuts have been tweeted worldwide. Yeah. I wish I had a furry penis. Because <laughs> 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 when I... Whenever I felt the urge, very rarely, just, just, just sort of put my hand down there. <laughs> but now it's even furry. <laughs> 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 You just go, oh, and people say, you could do it on a train, for example. If, you, if I put my hand down my trousers on a train, what are you doing? You go, but if you said, no, look, it's furry. <laughs> you go, oh, that's lovely, that. It's not furry. And offering it to other people would be less sinister. <laughs> would you like to stroke this? <laughs> it's furry. But, John, you do, you do cookery shows in your home. Yeah, sometimes, a little bit, on my own. Um, that's the problem I have. I don't mind the cookery show, the cooking is fine. It's that bit at the end. What they make look easy is suddenly having loads of cool mates who turn up. <laughs> uh, Jamie Oliver never finishes a flan without the doorbell going, Oh, it's my mates who are in a band. We're just riding our mopeds down to the Grand Canyon where we're going to have a picnic. <laughs> I, think, I can finish a meal and just go, Oh, there's nobody else here to see this. <laughs> what a waste of four hours of my pissing life that was. <laughs> Nigella's even worse. She comes down in the middle of the night and goes, Hey, they're all upstairs, but I'm just eating flan at three o'clock in the morning, but I'm still thin, even though I eat cake at midnight. But if you do that, you'll actually die, you fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So most people think cookery shows make it look too easy, true or false. What are you going to go for, Sean? True. You're going to go true? What, what do you think, John? We think it's true. You think it's true? I OK, I can true. tell you the answer is true. 72% of people think cookery shows do make it look too easy. <laughs> I have to admit, I've got a knack for cooking. A knack. She's from Hungary and she's an excellent cook. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's five points for Sean's team and four points for John's team. Aww. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your question. Worst thing to have tattooed on your body? Is it the time? <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you got any tattoos? Absolutely not. No, are you, would you be tempted? I think the worst thing to have tattooed on your body is ink. No way. <laughs> I'm thinking of having one done. Oh, well, you should definitely do it. Definitely do it. <laughs> and go with the first thought you have. <laughs> what would you get? What I want a under the wedding ring. Under the wedding ring? Yeah. I don't, I don't know, I think there's something quite romantic about that. Because there's a lot of pain involved in having it done there, apparently. Tattoos on fingers, very painful. I saw this guy and he had, uh, he had the names of various girls he'd been out with on his arm and crossed out. So, you know, like, you know, to the latest one. And I thought, you remember at school when you used to learn about Henry VIII and his wives? Yeah. <laughs> and it would say, you know, Catherine of Aragon divorced, Anne Boleyn beheaded. <laughs> Get a, a, a divorce, 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 beheaded and died. Divorce, beheaded, <laughs> survived. Yes. Is that di divorce, beheaded, and <laughs> died? <laughs> it's quite good if you did that with your current girlfriend, the girlfriends of your life. You know, you did that, so you'd have, like, you know, the first one was, you know, she emigrated to Australia, <laughs> injunction, <laughs> Australian order, then it would be Derek, uh, I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now let's have a look at some tattoos. So, uh, very famously tattooed is uh, David Beckham. <laughs> well, the mighty Wookiee Chewbacca seems to know. <laughs> <laughs> the sleeve ones are rank. This thing that's caught on for having a whole sleeve. Because it'll spread to, like, there'll be trouser leg. Yeah. When I was growing up in the East End, you met the odd man who had a, a cobweb across his face. Yes. That's commitment. That that's means that, you know, Do you if think... I don't get that part in Spider-Man, I am in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'm never comment. sure about that, whether that's to be intimidating or they're just really scared of flies. <laughs> 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 So it's uh, someone from your past? Your ex partner. That's the right answer. <laughs> yes, the worst thing to have tattooed on your body is your ex's name. If you're a parent and you're worried your child might get a tattoo, I've got a bit of advice for you. Bring them up better. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are John, Mel and Mickey have four points, Sean, Catherine and Stephen are tonight's winners with six points. Nah. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. all about opinion polls, surveys, statistics and more of the best bits from this series. Did you know, for example, 25% of people do their weekly online shop whilst in bed? I do. It helps me remember what we need. Meat, two veg, dumplings, a couple of baps. 65% <laughs> of people think Britain is a great place to live. And that's a survey of people hanging on to the undercarriage of the Eurostar. <laughs> And 94% of men consider themselves romantic. I'm really romantic. I often stand under my girlfriend's window and serenade her with my guitar. I say my girlfriend, it's the woman next door. I say serenade, I mean stare. And also, that's not a guitar I'm holding. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. John's team, what do you think people have been talking about over the last week? Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> do you think I the get pressure so was nervous, on? I thought you were going to ask me first. I, I just you get relax. so nervous in that moment. I go, who's he going to ask first? And you ask John. Phew! You know? <laughs> it's, not, it's not Sean and the twins. <laughs> We don't look like twins, we look like finalists in a what's Mika going to look like in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> John Steen, what do you think people have been talking about over the last week? One of our MPs, uh, Nadine Doris, oh, has yes. decided the best way she can get ahead as a politician is to go into the jungle. And eat kangaroo testicles. <laughs> she's decided to enter I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, and not spotted that she's an MP, and it's not called I'm an MP, I should probably do some work. <laughs> Since taxpayers pay me to do my work. So she's gone out there. She's al I've already seen enough of her. It hasn't even started. <laughs> I've already seen pictures of her Topless. sunbathing in the nude. And her breasts are actually a very good analogy for the coalition. 
because they appear to be a partnership, and yet they're putting as much distance between themselves. <laughs> Would you do it? Yes. No way. I hate spiders. I hate moths. Moths? Moths! moths. <laughs> it's just a black and white up here now. <laughs> you hate moths? It's just a black and white butterfly. <laughs> I got home the other day, right, and I saw this massive moth, right, in my bathroom. You saw a moth in your bathroom? Yeah, right? I needed to have a shower and I was too scared to go in. So what I did is I went in with this You're super... You're too scared? I went into the bathroom, right, with this super strong hairspray. What? <laughs> Seriously. And you did the moth's moth. hair? No. <laughs> I sprayed this moth, shut the door, waited for a minute, saw it on the floor, sprayed it, and then literally oh. crucified it like it was just stuck. <laughs> Poor moth is there. He's blind. He ain't blind. Is he blind? Yes. Now you feel bad, don't you? <laughs> Basically, you've got up to a blind person and just sprayed <laughs> hairspray in their face. <laughs> Carol, would you ever go into the jungle? What would it, what would it take? No, I wouldn't go into the jungle. You get offered it every year? Yeah. Every Should year I tell you call? how much they offered me yeah, this yeah, year? Yeah, yeah, go on. Wow. £250,000. £250,000? Really? And you went, no, I'm not doing it, not no. worth it. Can I go dressed I'll go tomorrow. <laughs> I think it was £250,000. I'm not very good with numbers. Twenty-five. <laughs> was in the hundreds. Even if it's twenty-five. I'd eat the whole kangaroo. I'd start at its yeah. feet and just eat... <laughs> I'd eat its fur, its face. I'd eat, <laughs> I'd eat the whole kangaroo. <laughs> I'd let the kangaroo eat my balls! <laughs> <laughs> the, the Starbucks, the coffee people. <laughs> they've, been a bit they've been a bit naughty. What have they done? The Starbucks. What have they done? <laughs> <laughs> what have they done? They've Nothing. been at it, haven't they? They've been, not been paying tax. They don't pay any tax. They managed to sell. <laughs> <laughs> Get your head round that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just... <laughs> but they've, they've managed to make their books appear that they're losing money, and basically what they do is they they take the losses from other countries and lump them onto the business here. It's endemic. It's not just the company as well. Some of the staff as well. Look. <laughs> Just after a meeting with their accountant. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> they are one of the few places you can have a coffee and watch women getting their tits out. <laughs> There's a mother's breastfeeding. <laughs> In my one, where, where I am, there's like a, a thing there and there's all bushes on it. And when the breastfeeding mothers come in, you can just peep through the bushes <laughs> like that. It's almost like they're saying, oh, go on, enjoy your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just don't you know that this is being recorded? <laughs> Sean, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Oh, <laughs> the Tory party conference. Oh, you love it. I was marvelled at the... It, just, it was brilliant, wasn't it? Did you enjoy it? Oh, the part when I came on. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. I didn't see that, so I missed that bit. <laughs> I didn't really do any research. <laughs> Sorry, did you, did you, did you, what part were you on? Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I came on and talked about my story in the games and uh, my family came on as well and talked about what it's like to raise a champion. Right. Who did you meet? Uh, Tessa Jowell and um, oh, Jonathan Edwards. Yeah. She's quite, she quite a nice person, Labour? actually. Tessa Jowell's Labour, I think. Theresa yeah. May's Tory. Theresa May. Even know she they made a big impression on you anyway. <laughs> 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 Are you sure you're at the Tory conference? It, you know, it might it might have been the the Labour. Might be one. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, Johnson. What else have the uh, nation been talking about over the last year? Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a seance, man. <laughs> <laughs> what have the nation been talking about over the last year? <laughs> <laughs> John, what have the nation been talking about over the last year? Uh, well, it can't all be fun, can it? The mm. levers and the. Uh, <gasps> <laughs> One of his comments was like a Yoda thing. He said, Who should guard the guardians? Not no one. <laughs> Might as well have commissioned Yoda. Who should look after him? Not no one. <laughs> oh, 
Poss possibly someone then. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the money? Or is he more like a garlic? He does. Hang on. I like the way we're getting to the heart of the issue here. He said like this. <laughs> That's all right. You might as well have come out on the steps and just said, instead of having a go at the press in any way, you should have just said, celebrities, royals, behave yourselves. Yeah. Mm. And that way, he'd have said, we won't even need to report on you. <laughs> None of this would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> Because you can't do this sort of stuff on British Bake Off. <laughs> you can't, during the judging of a cake, you can't go. <laughs> <laughs> but mm. it's incredible that he's still. Mel's about to make a serious point. There's no way. Brace There's yourselves. No way you can... <laughs> what I want to know is, though, it happened to so many people, this hacking business. How. It must be. But it must be quite easy to do. So, how do you hack? someone's call. How do you do it? It's obviously quite easy. My dad used to hack into my calls back in the 1970s by lifting the receiver on the other phone in the house. With his talons. So I'd be... <laughs> <laughs> so I would be in the hall... <laughs> I'd be... fly off of it. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad's a griffin, yes? He's, He's a, a griffin. griffin. I'd be... <laughs> seeing me! <laughs> On the trim phone in the hall, <laughs> and my d I'd be going. Your dad would be on his perch. And so <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, it's not one of the most talked about things. But yes, the Levinson inquiry was all over the papers. After thousands of hours, hundreds of witnesses, and millions of pounds, the Levinson inquiry came to one inescapable conclusion: Piers Morgan is a. <laughs> Um, the guy who um, did the nearly marathon for skydive thing. <laughs> the guy who did the nearly marathon but thing, skydive thing. It was 24 miles, thing. wasn't it? it, it well, it was, so it's yeah, nearly a marathon, isn't it? It was 23 miles up, though. That's not. I mean, traditionally, how a marathon is run. <laughs> I know, but it's the same. I near could do the a mileage. Like that. You just dropped me from 26 miles. <laughs> I reckon I break the world record as well. <laughs> yeah, like that. Suck on that, Paula Radcliffe. <laughs> I don't mean that. Beforehand on the news, they were saying if, if the suit fails, if the suit fails, his blood is going to boil and his eyes will pop out of his head. And you're going, wow, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was fine. Well, if you paid that much for a suit and it didn't work, my blood would boil as well. <laughs> I was hoping that they got, the, they got the calculations wrong and then when he let go, they got the gravity calculation where he'd gone up and stuck to the moon. <laughs> 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 or a trampoline at the bottom. He could just bounce. A trampoline, he could, have, <laughs> he could have broken the record twice if he'd had a trampoline. Or, or when he jumps out of that thing, there's somebody in there and they push an anvil out after him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a race to the ground. Yes, Austrian skydiver Felix Baumgartner became the first man to break the sound barrier by skydiving from 24 miles up. No human has travelled as fast unassisted since 1978 when Jimmy Savile heard St Mary's school choir were going on top of the pops. <laughs> Another Bond movie? Yeah! Another one. Brown we don't sound excited. Oh, we've got Homeland now, we don't need Bond anymore. You've got Homeland, yeah. we don't need Bond? Yeah. Homeland's way better than the Bond what? movies. <laughs> what are you saying? You think, oh, it's darker and grittier. Yeah, oh. it'd, be, it'd be darker if he had to get Ryanair flights everywhere. Beside <laughs> <laughs> Bond, kneeling beside the check-in desk, stuffing underwear in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> My tip for a film. If you're making a film and you get a theme tune, Get someone to sing the theme tune who can pronounce some of the words. 
that are in the theme tune. What's, she, what's your issue with the theme tune? She cannot speak. <laughs> Is this Adele? Lovely Adele. I won't Lovely have a word said against her. Adele, or as I'm sure she says it, Adele. <laughs> <laughs> Three times I heard it, I thought it was a song about scaffold. Scaffold! <laughs> <laughs> I put forward a Bond theme and they didn't go for it. Yeah, well, uh, that's a shame. What was, what was yours? Bond on a bike, Bond on a boat. <laughs> Bond with his hands around a middle and throat. Skyfall! Skyfall! <laughs> Skyfall! Skyfall! Da 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 da! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> well, the interesting news this week is Lord McAlpine, I guess, yeah. who's suing all of Twitter. He's suing 10,000 Twitter users who basically wrongly outed him as a paedophile. The good news about it all is that Sally Burkow has been forced to close her Twitter account. <laughs> so, Lord McAlpine, he's received £185,000 from the yeah. BBC and £125,000 from ITV. A lot of fuss, isn't it? He's made a lot of fuss. For £185,000, you can call me a paedophile for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Newsnight, treat yourselves. <laughs> You're on Twitter, Twitter, Melanie, aren't you? I was kind of forced into tweeting because when you're, you know, when you're promoting something, this social media, it's kind of, that's what it's there for, you know, let people know what you're doing. But then when you start doing that, people slag you off. And it's like, well, isn't that what well, it's There's a weird thing, yeah, when you go, yeah, my new record's out tomorrow, and people yeah. go, oh, yeah, oh, you're just trying God, to sell God records. Uh, Why do you think I'm doing yeah. this? <laughs> what do you think I'm doing here? <laughs> What's the new album called? Got stages. Stages. Yeah, I hate it. You know, it's so funny, isn't it? You hate it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not that bad, ladies and gentlemen. Give it a go. No, it's weird because you you do all this shit, don't you, to promote stuff? This is not <laughs> shit. <laughs> What do you think, Sean? Britain is finally out of double-dip recession. <laughs> the recession is over! <laughs> is that, is that a recession? And, boy, does that make me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the GDP has grown by 1% in the third quarter of this year. Most so... people don't even know what GDP is. What? Do you know what GDP is? Oh, sure. What is it? Well, gross domestic product. Yeah, but... but what is that? What is... Well, the gross domestic product. Yeah, what is it's like the and... things that we make in houses that are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it is a coincidence, isn't it, that someone started paying tax again and the country's out of recession. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the worst thing about the recession is I read this week Argos is closing stores and they're going no. digital. No more Argos catalogues. What am I supposed to do in the toilet? <laughs> there's no Argos catalogue to play the Argos game where you flick through and you go, yeah. ah, ah, treadmill. <laughs> the joy for me with the Argos was that it's, it was, it's like a shop, but much more like a bookies in that you study the form <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to take a punt on that. <laughs> <laughs> Please, they go over to the big screen. You're like, come on, 167. <laughs> <laughs> From a sporting perspective, it, it's got to be the fantastic Swedish goal uh, scored by Ibrahimovic against England. Johnny, what's the thing that you're proudest of? Because I imagine that'll be for the rest of his life. That'll be the moment he's most proud of. For me, genuinely. Yeah. You really want to know? Yeah. One time I told a builder to fuck off with a quote. One time you... A builder came round with a quote and I had just opened the door. <laughs> I was in the early stages of pissing myself and I went, just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even discuss it with him. He came round and went, it's going to be about when just fuck off. <laughs> I was in the early stages of pissing myself. <laughs> it's the funniest phrase I've ever yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you open the door then? No, cos he went... Cos, Polite. Cos, Right, I actually thought he might have a good quote and I wouldn't mind pissing myself for the... <laughs> but I actually squeezed the end of my penis and ran to the toilet. You could start a proper rapper war 
I could do that. I could start a war. I I'm... could do it more directly. Go on, then. Just lock down the lens and say, Oi, rappers, suck my balls. <laughs> Except you, you don't have to suck my balls. I'm more of a singer anyway. You're a singer. So What's I a rapper sing... then? Rapper's just. Um... What's a rapper? <laughs> <laughs> What's a rapper then? <laughs> he's in his cardigan there. He's in a bag of What do you need to know? <laughs> Tell me about this rapping. <laughs> <laughs> and when does a rap become a song? Are you serious? <laughs> It's sort of. Do you, know, do you know the difference between Jay Z and Beyonce and what they do? I know the difference well, enough. One's to a know. mummy and one's a daddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is so awful. If, I, if I say, like, uh, I went to the shop and got some chips. <laughs> you can't get chips from a shop. <laughs> Isn't it supposed to rain anyway? Chips and shop don't rain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, only the, that's only the first well, line. Get the, get the next line out. Go on. <laughs> You went to the shop and bought some chips. Yeah, then I got some ketchup and other dips. <laughs> There's a new TV show, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brand new they, show. They call it The X Factor. <laughs> right. And they get these singers, and I, I mean, it's too early to tell what's going to happen next. <laughs> also, you use the word singers in inverted commas. Yeah. <laughs> I've stopped doing them, I just do it with my speech now. These, these singers, or professional crying penises. <laughs> <laughs> They're crying already. It's going to get worse. I wouldn't drink the water around the X-Factor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they put something in the tea, and you can get the most hard-hearted person who drink the tea and just go... <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a pigeon. <laughs> If there is a drink that makes you cry, it's almost certain that Heston made it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a special type of tea that brings melancholy. <laughs> it, and it's actually made with melons and collie dogs. <laughs> <laughs> of course it bloody is, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just... Don't they just call that, like, red wine? Isn't that what you drink to cry? I drink red wine, I bore my eyes out for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. What have you got to cry about? All your dreams have come true. <laughs> <laughs> you don't your know what my draw... dreams are. Your you sock drawers are immaculate. <laughs> You've got a cardi and people listen to you. Yeah. That's <laughs> 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 definitely got to be the X Factor, hasn't it? The yeah, dodgy, uh, dodgy yeah. decision with Louis. There was a dodgy decision with Louis. Yeah. What, what? Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Dawn, what did Louis do? Tell me the story. Um, apparently, uh, one, of the, one of the producers came up to him on stage and um, was whispering something in his ear, and then he changed his mind about his decision. He said, uh, they're in your dressing room and they're ready to go. <laughs> nachos. I meant nachos. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with X Factor, what it is. Basically, if you were Simon Cowell, then Britain is a warm apple pie. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a bit of it, and Gary Barlow says to one of the contestants, like, who's going to buy your records? And uh, obviously the contestants turned over to the table and just went... <laughs> but what they should have said was, the same fucking idiots that buy yours. <laughs> So those were the most talked about things this week. But in other news, Cheryl Cole has revealed she needed vitamin jabs in her bum to cope after Ashley Cole's infidelity. I don't know if the jabs worked or not, but can I just say to Cheryl Cole's doctor, high five. <laughs> the Church of England have announced the Bishop of Durham is to become the new Archbishop of Canterbury. He's made up, as is his religion. <laughs> And I hit the headlines in June. When I got the message the papers had been calling, I jumped into action, started hitting my laptop with a hammer and digging up the patio. And then I found out something about tax. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for part one. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to AI 10 Cat's Best Bits. Our next round is Pick of the Polls. Most people love being the centre of attention, true or false? False. Who would want to be centre of attention? <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, of all the people you know, Sean, mm. who would want to be centre of attention only? <laughs> Are you all... <laughs> Sit still, Louis. 
I, I'm, I don't mean to draw attention to myself or anything. I mean, really. So, I, I'm not going to be sending attention to myself. OK. I don't think he can get up now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Luckily, I've got early onset Alzheimer's. <laughs> What about you, Joe? Do you enjoy the limelight? Y yes and no, because there's good attention and bad attention, isn't there? But I was going into um, Little, I love Little, and this old lady came out <laughs> with her husband, and she looked at me for, like, about ten seconds, which was a bit too long. And then, so I was like, oh, I'm being recognised. And then after ten seconds, she turned to her husband and went, we forgot to buy faggots. <laughs> <laughs> Most people would rather host a house party than go to one. True or false? I don't go to many house parties anymore. I go to a lot of four, fourth and fifth children's birthday parties these days. I don't have kids. I just <laughs> prefer the food and games they play. I like all the stuff about parties. I like doing a big shop and putting loads of nibbles out. And then I always... This is true. I genuinely realise I haven't really invited anyone. Cos <laughs> I don't really like people in my house. <laughs> It's that bit when you go to text people and you say, oh, I don't like you. Uh, I don't mind you, but not in my house. Yeah. <laughs> if I invite you, I'll have to invite him. Yeah, and you'll bring your girlfriend and touch each other and talk about it. <laughs> Come to my house and fiddle in my conservatory, not on my snacks. <laughs> you want to be in love, you stay at home and cater for yourself. <laughs> Bloody travelling chef for your sex games. <laughs> On the invite, though. <laughs> Twenty-eight percent of people think the government is hiding evidence of aliens. You shouldn't even be saying that. <laughs> For Christ's sake, Jimmy, that stuff should be kept under wraps. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the truth that? is out there. Doof, doof, doof. <laughs> Man, you can't put that shit out there and blow their fucking minds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, They're not God. ready for it, Jimmy. I can't believe you said it. <laughs> Do you believe aliens, Bunley? Don't, and anyone who does is a knobhead. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you've got a sound problem. Hang on, what's the sound problem? Have we got well, more obviously the sound? That's, they're trying to shut us down, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not fucking shaking me! <laughs> Whose mic is it? It's, it's, it's Sean's mic. Well, you just saw it, innit? Yeah. <laughs> 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 This isn't proof of what I've been saying. 28% <laughs> 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 of people think the government is hiding evidence of aliens. True or false? We think it's true. OK, you think true? What are you going to go for, Sean? It doesn't matter what we say, it'll be covered up. <laughs> They'll change my words to say what they want me to say. <laughs> what you want in there? Don't say that. <laughs> sure. Put your life in there. <laughs> yeah. Most people think they could become an Olympic athlete if they trained every day for four years. True or false? That's a great question. Thanks. <laughs> I've been working on it. I'm really thinking about it. <laughs> what do you think? Could you be an Olympic athlete? Four, four years is loads, isn't it? Four years is four years is way too much to be training. Well, like, you think you'd cause... go over the Olympic standard and just give up? <laughs> you know, well, this is crazy. I'm too good at this. Them, them, them Jamaicans learned how to bobsled in under ninety minutes, didn't they? So. <laughs> Most British people judge others by their accent, true or false? What, what do you think, Henning? Do, do you think people judge you? Because you've got a bit of an accent, haven't you? I've got a bit of an accent. <laughs> Definitely, there is a certain degree of judgement. I recently did a gig up in Bolton and I got heckled with that wonderful line, Fuck off, back to London! <laughs> Listening to Chaz and Dave finally paid off. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, what, what do you think? Do you think British people judge others on their accent? Oh, well, I mean, I judge people long before they've opened their mouths. So... <laughs> <laughs> Saves a lot of time, doesn't straight it? Straight in there. Yeah. yeah. Johnny, do you think anyone ever judges you by your accent? Yeah, of course you do. It's not your accent, Johnny. It's the bollocks you talk. <laughs> I know 
more than I'm judged by my accent because there's certain letters, there's certain uh, vowels that I miss out. If there's whole words you miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> when I run over you later. <laughs> Most women are more attracted to a geek than a tough guy, true or false? <gasps> what do you think, Catherine? I think we want the same thing men want. It's like a lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets. I want, like, a sister <laughs> Sorry, what was that that we want? A, la a lady in the streets? You don't even know what you want. Men. <laughs> <laughs> men want... No, I think you've just nailed exactly what I want. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> a lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets. Yes. I want the opposite. Really? I want someone that will go straight off to sleep and then be mental in the street. I want them now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for part two. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to AI Our 10 Cats Best Bits. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Best way to cheer yourself up. Jason, how do you cheer yourself up if you're feeling down? Am I allowed to say? I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Kinder eggs. But... <laughs> Chocolate and a toy, yes, please. <laughs> Still like a Kinder egg. The toys are shit now, though. Yeah, I know, but we are adults now. Uh... <laughs> Sexiest celebrity chef. Uh, Heston is a very acceptable eighth. <laughs> eighth. This is this is just on on sexiness. Heston would be the most interesting to have sex with, wouldn't he? <laughs> Take your clothes off. I'm going to go and dip my cock in well, li liquid nitrogen. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> now, Heston, you're renowned for cooking unusual dishes. Calf's brain custard. Yes, that's for a TV show. Is, was it any good? Actually, calf's brains themselves don't taste so much. They're very creamy and pasty. I think it's a waste of a calf's brain, making custard out of it. <laughs> I just like it raw, straight out of the calf's head. <laughs> <laughs> Was that like a boiled egg? Once <laughs> 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 you eat half of it, it calms down. <laughs> Coolest job. Window cleaner. <laughs> it's that bit when you know when the windows all they've sponged it all and it's all messy and then they get the squeegee. <laughs> oh, imagine a round window, get right round it like that. <laughs> Look at his face! What about what about the beginning when they toss the whole bucket all over the window? Oh. Big window like that, excuse me. Oh, it's, it's filthy, that window, John. <laughs> it's filthy. There's, there's grime's been caked on there for months. Oh. <laughs> oh. Dribbling down at the sides. Oh, yeah. It? <laughs> it's getting down onto the window below, and that's even dirtier. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get it. Oh, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Sorry. In fairness, you forgot about the most beautiful part of window cleaning, because I used to uh, be a window cleaner. You go up, into the corner, down, round, right, and then, and then you do it, man. Two, two little flicks. <laughs> you, you flick to the side once, bang. You flick to the other side, bang. Until in the end you end up with a little arc of foam there, and there's a final little... <laughs> pull away, chamois out, lively. <laughs> Most annoying thing about going to the cinema? I, I personally happen to enjoy them, but I feel like a lot of people complain about the previews, you know? I get annoyed but I get the previews, or trailers, as we call them, yeah, trailers, uh, because yeah. that's what they're called. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I get annoyed when there's a trailer for something that's better than the thing I've gone to see. So you sort of, you're going, oh, why have I come to see this? That yeah. looks amazing. Yeah, usually it's because it hasn't opened yet, is why they... <laughs> <laughs> Because it's a preview. All <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> Best thing about a British holiday. Since I moved here, for me, all of Britain is like a holiday. 
which is exciting. I live near this place, the Brixton McDonald's. I don't know if anyone's been there. I think it's but... just called McDonald's in Brixton. No. <laughs> and it's great, because if I'm ever feeling like, oh, what am I doing with my life? I just go to the Brixton McDonald's at four in the morning, and then I'm like, I'm doing fine. <laughs> I got a 50 pound fine there for putting out a cigarette out on the ground. And it's like, really, that's the thing you're focusing on here? <laughs> like, there's the team from The Wire dealing drugs all around me, and the guy's like, why didn't you just put it in the bin? There's a man shitting in the bin! <laughs> I'll tell you why I like a British holiday, seeing the look of disappointment on your family's face. <laughs> when you tell them where we're going. And then you laugh like that. <laughs> Norfolk! <laughs> Worst thing about doing DIY. See, I find a bit of DIY quite therapeutic. I enjoy it. What I mean, was the last bit of DIY? Home you did? improvement. I enjoy the aesthetics, you know, but Do you I, mean I enjoy buying cushions. Yeah. <laughs> That's not DIY. <laughs> buying cushions. <laughs> it's improving yeah. the home. Yeah, I bought some cushions. <laughs> oh, exhausted. <laughs> I like it personally. I don't see the problem. What was the last thing you built? It was a, a white unit from IKEA, and uh, not it, do it yourself. Yeah, but you drink your way, drink through it. That's the thing that I don't understand. Why, do, why isn't everybody drunk making things? The worst thing about IKEA is you're not allowed to punch people in the back of the head. <laughs> why do they walk so slow? Get through! I don't, I don't call it IKEA. I call it IKEA! <laughs> and they say, can you keep it down? I say, look how big you've written it. <laughs> <laughs> You write it that big. <laughs> that big, I say. Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Cancer show all about opinion polls, surveys, and statistics. Did you know, for example, 25% of children aren't allowed to play conkers at school? I wasn't allowed to touch my conkers at school. Apparently, it was putting off the netball team. 13% <laughs> of people have been visited by a dead person, or to put it another way, 13% of people have fallen asleep thinking about their nan. A survey's revealed lap dancers pay four times as much for car insurance as nurses, presumably because lap dancers are more at risk of being rear-ended. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellists' job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. Sean Steen, what do you think the nation have been talking about over the last week? X Factor was quite controversial, was it? Yes, That's what like... happened on X Factor? I, I think someone went, that was you quite, didn't quite watch good. It this year. No. <laughs> have you ever been approached as a judge on one of those shows? I did one this summer called Superstar, but it was an Andrew Lloyd Webber thing for Jesus Christ Superstar. And I was in it, I was Mary Magdalene. Did Jimmy came to the show? I came to it, was, it was pretty good, it was pretty fun. Jesus Christ Superstar, what's not to like? <laughs> I, I realised I couldn't look any gayer than with this waistcoat on, so now I'm going <laughs> to fully come out and go, musical, yeah, you look like, terrific. You're like a sommelier who's had a sudden court appearance. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the look oh. I was going for. <laughs> 
Do you like uh, X Factor? Do you like? Because I mean, it's um, it's a bit manufactured pop music. Mm. It's not like the good old days with the Spice, Spice Girls. Spice Girls, of course. <laughs> um, I think that now. I'm just a bit bored of the whole format, really. But, you know, maybe unfair I'm saying that, because I haven't seen any of this series, cos I've... Well, I think I've a lot of people watch Strictly is winning in the ratings, isn't it, this year? And I think it's cos it's a happier show. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> just, but it just shows you people admire people who can dance more than sing, you know? That's why Strictly is so much bigger than X Factor, right? Cos deep down, everybody thinks they can sing in the shower, but nobody thinks they can dance in the shower. <laughs> I think it's a better show, because on, on Strictly you get singing and dancing. Yeah. On X Factor you get neither. <laughs> and the, the band and the vocalists on Strictly are incredible, aren't they? They are amazing. Yeah. I mean, I think they've got the best live vocals on television. Yeah, they're incredible. But I don't watch the X Factor, because I've, I've, I'm busy. Mm. <laughs> you should get Sky Plus. I've got it. I've got it. Tape but it, we yeah. tape Strictly because my girls watch it and dance, you know, again and again. They love it. I mean, my favourite this year is Lisa Riley. Do you think she's going to win? She won't, I don't know if she'll win. She <laughs> might make it to the final because she's so popular. Yeah. Um, who's going to win it? I don't know who's going to win it. I mean, Denise, obviously, is brilliant, has been brilliant from the off. But is she too good that people will disengage and sort of think she doesn't need them to vote for her? You, you start it. I can go on all night. <laughs> I don't want to have to tell Vernon, but... What? Well, that was pretty sexy, that. <laughs> Uh, it's been quite a long time for John. If you could just not make any physical contact, that would be <laughs> your best for everyone. there was anything there. <laughs> <laughs> How high pitch was that? <laughs> Trying oh. to get up to the bicep, aren't you? But you can't get your hand around it, can you? <laughs> Melanie, would you go on Strictly? Um, I, I do love Strictly, actually, and I know people who've done it. Emma's done it, hasn't she? Emma Bunton's Emma done did it. really she well. She was brilliant. I think yeah. she came second. Do you know Emma Bunton? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, go on. I would like to do it. If it's still on in ten years, I'd like to do it. Because I'd like to be a more mature lady. Because then I think, because I can dance a bit, I think it'd be more impressive. If you could do it in ten years? Yeah, when, when I'm, like, older. Uh, jo, now, uh, presumably they ask you to go on Strictly every year. No, we never have. <laughs> I, 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 I've been asked to do it as one of the pros. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, said, I said, I can't go as a contestant, I'm trained. You know, in uh, modern jazz, ballet, whatever. So it'd be an unfair advantage. I'll still do it. It's good cash. <laughs> 40 quid a night, why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd be amazing on that. Yeah, I know. Actually, Jimmy... <laughs> Jimmy, I've always thought that you'd be amazing on it. On, on, on Strictly? Yeah. Yeah, I worry that the, the clothes are a little bit camp. <laughs> Okay. Should we have a look and see whether uh, Strictly and X Factor are one of the most talked about things this week? Yeah. So look. <laughs> yes, Strictly come dancing. Strictly got its highest viewing figures when the dancers performed live at Wembley Arena. They had to temporarily move out of BBC Television Centre as it was being swept for paedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> John, Joe, Tess, um, what else have the nation been talking about over the last week? At least it could be called John Joe. When you said that then, it reminded me of my mum when I was about five. Oh. John, John Joe, were you on Big Fat Gypsy Wedding? <laughs> <laughs> John Joe doesn't want to appear because for fear of his scrap metal business being affected. <laughs> it's always John Joe. Well, the interesting news this week is Lord McAlpine, I guess, yeah. who's suing all of Twitter. He's suing 10,000 Twitter users who basically wrongly outed him as a paedophile. The fine should be, instead of financial, because most people on Twitter are just bored people who don't earn a lot of money, you should be, if you do a bad tweet, you, you lose characters. So, like, speeding, but you just... You can only do 135 now. <laughs> and then if you're really bad, right, you can't use the letter E on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, Sally Burko tweeted, Why is Lord McAlpine trending? Innocent face. <laughs> And the good news about it all is that Sally Burkow has been forced to close her Twitter account. Yeah. Which is the only good thing. I would have had her close it ages ago for doing that stupid thing where you put an asterisk and then something you're doing, and then that really pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely starting the diet today. Asterisk goes for some cake. Asterisk, oh, piss off. <laughs> Hang on, Grandad looks upset. Sean, what? <laughs> well, I just don't know how you can be annoyed by her Twitter. What are you reading them for in the first place? Mm. <laughs> to get annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> What am I going to do with my day? So, Lord McAlpine, he's received £185,000 from the BBC and £125,000 from ITV. A lot of fuss, isn't it? He's made a lot of fuss. For £185,000, you can call me a paedophile for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Newsnight, treat yourselves. <laughs> 
I was over the moon when I found out I could sue people on Twitter. Things I get called. Yesterday, someone called me the most gormless man on the planet. <laughs> That's got to be worth a tenner. He can't have checked. He can't have checked with everyone. <laughs> I like Twitter, but it needs an extra app that you can put into your Twitter that between you pressing send, it takes 30 seconds where the screen goes to your face and you've got to stare at your face for 30 seconds. <laughs> and it's called, have a word with yourself. <laughs> you're on Twitter, Twitter, Melanie, aren't you? I was kind of forced into tweeting because when you're, you know, when you're promoting something, this social media, it's kind of, that's what it's there for, you know, let people know what you're doing. But then when you start doing that, people slag you off and it's like, well, isn't that what There's a weird called? thing, yeah, when you go, yeah, my new record's out tomorrow, and people yeah. go, oh, yeah, oh, you're just God, trying to sell God records. Uh, Why do you think I'm doing yeah. this? <laughs> what do you think I'm doing here? <laughs> What's the new album called? It's called Stages. Stages? Yeah. I hate it. Do you know, it's so funny, isn't it? You hate it? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a publicity ever. It's probably not that bad, ladies and gentlemen. Give it a go. No, it's weird, cos you, you do all this shit, don't you, to promote stuff? This is oh, not this shit! <laughs> You need to apologise for your comments. <laughs> you need to make a formal apology. I've only ever done one tweet. Did one tweet. And it, I've got 36,000 followers. <laughs> which, if you worked it out on a follower per tweet ratio, <laughs> I'm the most successful person ever on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> what did tweet. you tweet? I tweeted, due to a series of imposters, I have been forced to set up a Twitter account. Now go fuck yourself. <laughs> 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 I'd love it if you got into Twitter. I'd really, there's times I think about you in the week, and I just think, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know what you do. I just, there's times I think, what do I do? I'd love to know Not what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I sit in a tree and spit at pigeons. <laughs> so what do you think I do, John? I literally, that's one of the things, I just have no idea. I just, I can't imagine you eating food. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I can't imagine you going for a run or watching TV. I just imagine you in a dark room, sort of softly lit, just your face, staring at yourself in a mirror. Growling. <laughs> 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 I, I do stare at stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just go around, I'm just an ordinary sort of bloke, just does ordinary things. I'm usually, uh, I've got an old spinning wheel yeah. and I spin my own wool. <laughs> so I'm there spinning wool. Uh, I do that for the local community. Put, put I, take, I do box. meals on wheels, but I only do five days a week. I think two days a week, the lazy old bastards can go and get their own food. <laughs> right, back to Lord McAlpine. For me, what he's done is he's gone from the premiership of hate. Being a paedophile, you'd be like the premiership, wouldn't yeah. you? If you had, like, a league <laughs> tables of hate... Yeah, yeah, yeah. ...paedophile would yeah, be up there near the top. He's just slipped down into the championship, really. Cos <laughs> he's still a Tory non-dom. Nobody likes them, non-doms. They don't pay any tax. Really? So he's still... Fuckers. He's only gone down... <laughs> <laughs> he's only gone down a little bit. Yeah. Let's have a look and see if Lord McAlpine is up there. Lord McAlpine may sue 10,000 Twitter users for libel. What you can and can't say is a legal minefield, but what we definitely can say is that Jimmy Savile is a paedophile. Lord McAlpine isn't, and Gary Glitter is not getting as much babysitting work as he used to. <laughs> I watched the footage of Philip Schofield ambushing the Prime Minister on this morning, and like the rest of the nation, I thought Holly Willoughby's bangers are massive. <laughs> Those pedos are really missing out. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. One thing still to get. Uh... David Beckham, he's uh... leaving the galaxy. Get, yes. Leaving the galaxy. <laughs> Waiting till after Christmas to make a decision as to where he's going. Yeah. Melanie, where do you reckon they want to live next? Because Paris Saint Germain has offered. Yeah. I don't New know. York. Grimsby. <laughs> Wherever he goes, experts say the club could afford to pay him five hundred thousand pounds a week with the money he would bring in through increased sponsorship and TV deals. But why doesn't he just not join a club and just say people whatever money they're going to give to the club just give straight to him? <laughs> just have people collecting money around the country, just yeah. saying, this is for David Beckham, can you put it in here? <laughs> Do you like David Beckham? If you like David Beckham, can you put some money in there, please? <laughs> Hello, uh, we'd like to do a monthly transfer from your bank to David Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> I was born on the same day as David Beckham. 
Yeah. And you very uh, much had parallel lives. Yeah. <laughs> I sometimes think we may have been separated at birth. <laughs> Too similar. <laughs> and we both like sitting about in our pants. Except he only wears them once, and you've only yeah. got one pair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that annoys me about him the most is that everyone says, oh, he's got OCD because he doesn't wear his pants twice. That's not OCD, that's just being a wasteful prick. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria said about him, didn't she? Oh, if there's three cans in the cupboard, he throws one away, so there's two. Well, what a dick! <laughs> just buy another one and then there's four. You know four. what? You really need to start believing what you read. That was she said that and she does him. <laughs> she said that and she does him. It's a magnificent <laughs> turn of phrase. <laughs> if he was that obsessed with even numbers, he wouldn't have called his kids seven. That must annoy him. Every time he looks into the eyes of his own child, he must just think, I should have just should have said eight. <laughs> 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 he doesn't talk like that anymore. He's got a deeper voice now, hasn't I he? I should have said he. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look at uh, David Beckham doing what he does best? Yeah. Have a little look. Hey. Do you know what's really weird? I can't even look at that because, you know, so many women around the world, like, like oh, looking yeah. at David Beckham. Of course. But he's my friend's husband and it's really weird. Yeah. What, so you I, can't... I actually can't look. Why, why can't you go and treat yourself? <laughs> I don't <know. laughs> She won't mind, wrong. have a little look. <laughs> Feels wrong. I finally understand why they called that film Bend It Like Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you it's not in the top three, but David Beckham has announced he's leaving LA Galaxy. People idolise Beckham, but trust me, he's got skeletons in his closet, although she'll be out as soon as she finds something to wear. <laughs> People used to think David Beckham was thick, until Wayne Rooney. Fingers up, Buzz, there's one more thing to get. Go on, John. There's the, uh, the, the geezer who done all the money problems, um... has been said. <laughs> well, yeah, Could you be any less specific? <laughs> <laughs> the, guy, the guy who worked for UBS who... The rogue trader. The rogue trader. He He's gone to prison. He did steal a lot. He, sort of, yeah, fraud... He, done he, a, he, he uh... lost a lot. 1.4 billion. That's a hell of a meeting when he has to, when his bosses call him in. Do you reckon you try and bluff it out? Just go, we know what's happened, you got... Is this about the photocopier? <laughs> <laughs> Adaboli confessed his crime to his bosses in an email and he described the situation as a shitstorm. Yeah, I read that. <laughs> it's quite an understatement, really. It's, it's also quite... incredibly unprofessional to write that in a work email. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. That's an official warning, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. That's why he lost his job. One more of warning. those, mate, and you're out. <laughs> They not notice 1.4 billion. Yeah, well, how does it get happen? to 1.4 billion? What job is he going to get now? There's no, you can't apply for any job with that on your CV, can you? Even like KFC, <laughs> they're going to fit through. So what do you think you're going? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're having a laugh. I won't let you clean the toilet, you dick. Leave, leave I reckon he'll just leave it off his CV. <laughs> Not in the top three, but former UBS trader Kwaku Alaboli has been sentenced to seven years in prison after losing the bank £1.4 billion. Kwaku Alaboli is now banned from Britain's two leading financial institutions, Cash Converters and Wonga.com. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one more thing to get fingers on buzzers. Lady Bishops. Oh, God, yeah, that's yeah. a biggie. Yeah, yes. Lady, lady Bishops. You can't have Lady Bishops. No Lady Bishops allowed. Sad. Yeah. It's the end it's of a dream, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> is it not a, a huge blow for equality for the sake of a paltry six votes? They lost by six votes. Yeah, they really. did. But now they've got to wait. Is it seven years they've got to wait? I think until it's they ten years until the next synod. I actually thought this synod, this would be a perfect opportunity for, for God to reveal himself, wouldn't it? You know, if there was a God, you'd think he'd come down to the synod and say, yes, it's fine, Lady Bishop. <laughs> well, maybe God is a woman, controversial, and she's just really pissed off. What, and she's like, she's not talking to us, <laughs> and we're saying, what's the problem? And she's just going, well, if you don't up, know... Yeah. <laughs> she's got me on, but she's just like, yeah. Right. <laughs> sure. Do you think there are any jobs that women shouldn't be allowed to do? A lady boy. <laughs> Is that a job? No, I mean it. A, a woman should not be allowed masquerade as a ladyboy. Can you imagine how disappointed well, it... you'd be in your hotel room in Bangkok? <laughs> 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 no cock! Yeah. <laughs> female bishops, where do you stand on female bishops? Uh, well, the archbishop, he was keen, wasn't he? The, the new one was keen, yeah. Yeah, he was like, he, he was too keen. Because <laughs> he was quoted as saying, uh, it would be nice to have some sweet ass around the place. <laughs> I don't think those were his exact words. 
uh, the new one, the new Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Justin Welby, called it a grim day. Yeah, that's what I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'm a Miss Rowan Williams. I liked him. He had a cool voice. <laughs> it's the same voice as Saruman from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it's really cool. There will be no women bishops. That's <laughs> the guy you liked. Yeah. I'm going to say those eyebrows are going to be a deal breaker. <laughs> this, this is the new guy. I think they just shaved the old guy, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's definitely new. Don't worry about that. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, do you think women should be allowed to be bishops? I, I'm surprised anyone cares, really. It's just one of those things that you think, well, if you want to be a bishop, that's fine. I mean, I'm voodoo. What voodoo? I'm voodoo. Been very outspoken. We have a voodoo hoodoo every now and again. <laughs> Yeah, was what a big did you do at the Voodoo Hoodoo? Well, it was a big hoo-ha at the Voodoo Hoodoo this week. <laughs> because someone did a doo-doo at the Hoodoo. <laughs> you don't do a doo-doo at the Hoodoo. <laughs> and we didn't know who do who do who do <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether female bishops are one of the most talked about things mm. this week. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, the Church of England have refused to allow female bishops, denying male bishops the thing they so desperately wanted. Poontang on tap. <laughs> <laughs> so those were the most talked about things over the last week. But in other news, Andy Coulson and Rebecca Brooks have been charged with bribing officials. Through these difficult times, Rebecca Brooks is being supported by her husband, Charlie Brooks, her friend, Rupert Murdoch, and her sister, the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean, Andrew and Melanie have two points. John, Tess and Joe have one point. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 Cats. Our next round is Pick of the Polls. John, Tess, Joe, your turn first. What do you like the look of? The this. alien. The alien. You want to go alien? <laughs> OK, here's your related question. 28% of people think the government is hiding evidence of aliens. You shouldn't even be saying that. <laughs> For Christ's sake, Jimmy, that stuff should be kept under wraps. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the truth is out there. Doof, doof, doof. <laughs> Man, you can't put that shit out there and blow their fucking minds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're not oh, ready for it, Jimmy. I can't believe you said it. <laughs> well, for now, OK, remember, if I, if I get assassinated... 28% <laughs> of people think the government is hiding evidence of aliens, true or false. What do you think, John? I've been seeing it. I've been seeing it for 10 damn years. Ain't I been seeing it? <laughs> Finally, an accent that goes with that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I think if anyone is throwing insults about clothes, it shouldn't be you <laughs> Why are you wearing that? Cos I thought we weren't allowed to talk about it. Cos you know sometimes when someone's a bit weird, you can talk about it. And then when something's so weird, everyone yeah. goes, is he all right? <laughs> <laughs> thought wear a waistcoat. What's the matter with that? It's nice. It just looks ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, back to aliens. Do you believe in aliens, Billy? I don't. And anyone who does is a knobhead. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, know, you know something I found out? That you know, when you buy ham in a supermarket, in a packet, there's cameras in there. <laughs> you, you, look in the, you look at the hangar, oh, what's the sell by date on that? There's somebody watching you <laughs> in like a government office somewhere. <laughs> they're all just shocked. We're, we're, they're all going, going they're all going, why isn't this on the news? Because <laughs> they won't let it out there. So <laughs> that's, what, that's the sign of games they're playing with us. <laughs> Once you know that, the aliens thing doesn't seem so weird then. No. <laughs> We've got a, apparently, we've got a sound problem. Hang on one sec. What's the sound problem? We got well, obviously, sound? that's they're trying to shut us down, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not fucking shaking me! <laughs> <laughs> Whose mic is it? It's, it's Sean's mic. Well, Sean's mic. You're just sorting it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 if this isn't proof of what I've been saying. <laughs> Yeah, let's shut Sean up. <laughs> 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 All right, so 28% of people think the government is hiding evidence of aliens. True or false? I've been to Area 51. Right. What do you mean you've been to Area 51? I was arrested by the American Air Force at Area 51 a couple of months back. What were you, what were you doing at Area 51? I was making a programme about aliens for BBC Three. What happened was we went there and I was with a, 
a busload of people who are ufologists, people who believe in aliens. I personally don't. I believe in UFOs, but that's, that's not hard to do. That's an unidentified flying object. Mm. This is all it takes to believe in one of them. There's something in the sky. I don't know what that is. <laughs> No yeah. need to start a website. If I take, if I take my, <laughs> if I take my glasses off, a magpie is an unidentified flying object. <laughs> <laughs> I've had aliens in my in my house, in my bedroom. <laughs> they were coming. They were visiting us our, our, our so regularly. I had to get a restraining order. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> You've had real problems with this. Oh, it's terrible. It's been a nightmare, Jimmy. But they won't let this won't go out. Not this will go out. <laughs> you guys are all in league with them. <laughs> well, fuck you! <laughs> I'm speaking the truth! <laughs> yeah. Put your eyes me now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so what, what are you going to say? 28% of people think the government is hiding evidence of aliens. True or false? True. What do you think? I'm well out me dick. I think it's... I think it's likely to be true. We think it's true. OK, you think true? What are you going to go for, Sean? It doesn't matter what we say, it'll be covered up. <laughs> <laughs> They'll change my words to say what they want me to say. <laughs> Melanie, you're the only person that seems to be yeah, sane on your team. Put what you want in there! Yeah. Put what you want in there! Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Put your lies in there! <laughs> <laughs> true, Jimmy, of course it's true. All right, I can tell you the answer is true. Amazingly, 28% of people think the government is hiding evidence of aliens. <laughs> a lot of people report being abducted by aliens and anally probed, but there has to be a downside. <laughs> <laughs> the big question is, if alien invaders do come down to Earth and take over, would you recognise us? Sorry, them. <laughs> OK. Uh, Sean Steen, what do you fancy uh, answering on? Uh, That's me. I think we should have Mel. OK, this is, this is your related question. Most people think their life would make a good musical. True or false? Oh, I think most people's lives probably would make a good musical. No, they wouldn't. Most people's lives... Most people's <laughs> lives are boring as shit, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> they're not, though. They're not. Maybe. Maybe the individual, but families are always really interesting. There's always skeletons and scandals, and every know. family's got that, right? Yeah, true. Uh, fa favourite musical? Sean? I don't really like musicals, to be honest. Do you like anything? I do, I like loads of things. <laughs> Love rice. <laughs> 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 I like books, I like music. What music do you like? Well, all the good stuff. <laughs> what genre? All the good genres. <laughs> Do you like rock music? I like rock music, yes. OK, well, I would like to invite you to come and see Jesus Christ Superstar next year. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sadly, I do like musicals. I bet you do, don't you? I do, yeah. You said that really angry. I bet you do. <laughs> You're so repressed. Hey, I love a musical, I love too. A musical. We're repressed as well. <laughs> I'm not repressed. Look at this waistcoat. I'm out there. <laughs> I am what I am. I love a musical. I love a musical. I go to all of them. Shrek, Grease, all of them. Shrek is a musical. It was an amazing musical. Kimberly Walsh was in it when I went, and it, she was fantastic. Not a Shrek. <laughs> Not a Shrek. She was the Shrek princess. I think my life would make a good musical. Like this week alone, I've um, roasted a chicken. <laughs> been cycling pretty much every day. What more ingredients you need for a good, you know, musical? So, uh, Viva Forever, the Spice Girls musical, opens this week. What is that? The story of you, or is that the is that another story? But no, not... it's not. It's a, it's a story that's been inspired by the songs of the Spice Girls, and it's written by Jennifer Saunders, and it is brilliant. What's the story? The story is about a girl band. Okay. Mm. Hang on, the Spice Girls were girl. <laughs> Hang on a second. What happens? <laughs> Come on, tell us a bit of the story. It's very much. A... 
about <laughs> modern culture. It, there's a little piss take of the X Factor in there, and there's, mm. yeah. <laughs> it's really good. There's great characters, good relationships. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, I'm on your team. <laughs> But, uh, so it's a good musical then. I'm looking for it, so it's, it's great. You'll enjoy it. Right. No, you won't be cynical old bastard. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you where I am on his side. I like a musical, but I don't like those people in the background that start dancing. <laughs> what are you doing? You're, you're, you're a selection of chimney sweeps. This is none of your business. <laughs> what are you doing? This has got nothing to back to work, chimney sweeps. <laughs> He's the main character, she's the main one. He's right, really, beep, 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 beep. I really, beep, beep. Fair enough. Are well, those guys selling fruit? Yeah. Walking around going, oh, I'm just walking through selling fruit. Throw an apple up, someone catching goes, like that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, let's get some answers. So, most people think their life would make a good musical, true or false. What are you going to say, John? I don't think anyone would say that. My cat. <laughs> Sadly, my cat said to me, I think my life make a good musical. I had to say, it's been done, mate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but <here he> was. <laughs> we think it's false. False. OK, you're saying false. What are you going to go for? Mm. Melanie, what do you think? Oh, God. Um... Got pressure, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think false? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah we oh, think false. false. You think false. I can tell you the answer is false. Only 32% yeah. of people think their life would make a good musical. <laughs> the Phantom of the Opera is about a hideously ugly monster that hides backstage, playing the piano and staring at a woman he could never possibly have. I wonder how Andrew Lloyd Webber came up with that idea. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, it's four points for Sean's team and three points for John's team. <laughs> That's it for part two. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to AI Ten Cats. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your first one. Worst subject to talk about on a date. Is it why I sleep in bunk beds still? <laughs> They're fun! <laughs> Top or bottom? You choose. <laughs> you choose. Why would you go in the bottom on your own? I keep the crayons under the bottom bunk, so it's better to be in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> if I was at the top, I'd have to climb down, get me crayons, then climb <laughs> right back up again. I'm not doing it. No, it's, it's definitely top bunk, isn't it? Yeah, but you can't sneak off, whereas if you're on the bottom bunk, you can sneak off and the person at the top doesn't know. So you've got power in the bottom bunk. But why do you need to sneak off? <laughs> Because sometimes you do need to sneak off. As you've seen, there are situations where people need to take actions into their own hands, Melanie. <laughs> this world is not as safe a place as you thought it was. <laughs> What's your go-to subject on a date? What's your...? Uh, macroeconomics. <laughs> Every time. Quantitative easing, those sort of things. The Federal Reserve <laughs> is privately owned. Mmm, <laughs> bet you didn't know that. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> the Sub-Saharan Africa's uh, recent uh, commodities gold rush going to carry on into sustained development? Melanie? <laughs> <laughs> Got me. <laughs> OK. Apparently, men decide within 15 minutes of a date whether a second date is on the cards. Mm. Women know in 15 seconds. Yeah. Well, you know straight away whether it's yeah, going to be... Yeah, you do. You know. Right. And, and... I think so, yeah. Straight that away. initial thing, yeah. <laughs> if women know in 15 seconds, I'd rather they just said. <laughs> if you know, just say, just before we order wine, I already don't like you. <laughs> you don't want to talk about the wedding on the first date, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's weird. We've got to plan it now, haven't we? <laughs> what else are we going to talk about? What are you going to do on your 18th? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so it's to do with past relationships, that's the clue. Number of shags. That is the correct answer. Oh. <laughs> yes, the worst subject to talk about on a first day is how many people you've slept with. Oh, no. You might not think it's a look at me, but I've slept with literally hundreds of women. <laughs> of course, if a man sleeps with lots of women, he's called a stud, whereas if a woman sleeps with lots of men, she's called your mum. <laughs> And I am specifically talking about your mum. <laughs> OK. Worst thing about doing DIY? The only tool I've got is a hammer. I do all the jobs with it. 
All the jobs. Yeah, if I'm sanding a window with a hammer. <laughs> so, you know, painting the skirting board, hammer. <laughs> Changing a fuse yeah. in the plug. Hammer, yeah. My house is in ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> Power tools really mean you can screw up big fast. Like with a little <laughs> screwdriver, you're not really going to do much damage. You go, oh. But with like a power drill, you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 30 seconds and I have ruined that whole wall. <laughs> Nail guns are fun. Sorry. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> <laughs> 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 you don't need DIY, would you ever do any? Uh, no, get a man in, that's my answer to that. <laughs> See, I find a bit of DIY quite therapeutic, I enjoy it. What I mean, was the last bit of DIY? Home you did? improvement. I enjoy the aesthetics, you know, but Do you I, mean I enjoy buying cushions. Yeah. <laughs> That's not DIY. Buying <laughs> <laughs> <I enjoy. laughs> cushions. <laughs> it's improving yeah. the home. Yeah, I bought some cushions. So. <laughs> oh, exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I like it personally. I don't see the problem. What was the last thing you built? What was the last thing you? Uh, it was a, a white unit from IKEA, and uh, That's not uh, do it yourself. Yeah, but you drink your way, drink through it. That's the thing that I don't understand. Why, do, why isn't everybody drunk making things? <laughs> the worst thing about IKEA is you're not allowed to punch people in the back of the head. <laughs> why do they walk so slow? Get through! <laughs> I, don't, I don't call it IKEA. I call it IKEA! <laughs> and they say, can you keep it down? I say, look how big you've written it. <laughs> 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 you write it that big. <laughs> that big, I say. <laughs> IKEA! <laughs> okay, so um, a bad workman would blame this. Tools. What about them? Lack of the right tools. There you go. That's the right answer. You <laughs> 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 the point. Yes, the worst thing about doing DIY is not having the right tools. If you're doing DIY, there's one tool you definitely don't need. Nick Knowles. <laughs> I remember as a young lad my dad showing me how to use a hammer, but even then it seemed like a messy way to kill a guinea pig. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Andrew and Melanie have four points, John, Tess and Joe are tonight's winners with five points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. opinion poll survey statistics and the best bits from this series did you know for example the average mum has one hour a day to themselves that's the thing with mums selfish <laughs> nine out of ten children visit McDonald's once a month what's that thing that all the kids get in McDonald's oh yeah fat <laughs> and 27% of people keep a weapon by the bed to protect themselves against intruders. I don't have a weapon. Instead, I sleep in stockings and suspenders. <laughs> then if I'm burgled, I just throw back the covers and say, what kept you? <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> 
What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our palace job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean Steen, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Is it the fact that Abu Qatada, like Peter Andre, won't be going back to Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> She's the real tragedy, but that's the real tragedy. When will she find love? <laughs> <laughs> but on another matter, yes, we can't get rid of Abu Qatada. We can't, he's, yeah, it's terrible. I think that Abu Qatada, he gets a lot of unfair press here in the country. <laughs> like, it's always described as, a, as the nightmare neighbour. How can that man be a nightmare neighbour? I mean, he's not allowed to leave the house. And he's not allowed to have visitors. The police is always on the doorstep. He's an absolutely brilliant neighbour. And also, <laughs> if you've got a parcel coming, you can say, leave it at Abu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Guaranteed to all of you. Or we, someone at the probably resident. people won't do that for him, though. Yeah, I'll have one of Abu's parcels. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, John, David, Rachel, uh, what else have the nation been talking about over the last week? We're getting a new labelling system for food. It's basically saying, oh, poor people are stupid. They go into a supermarket and they pick up Haribo Tang Fastics and they think it's fruit. <laughs> <laughs> people know what shit food is. The reason they eat shit food is because they work all day in an office with people they hate. <laughs> <laughs> they're working in a job that they're told every day they're going to lose and then they go back to a shitty flat that they can't afford to buy. And do you know what they think? I don't fancy cuscus for tea. Do you know what I fancy? A mixing bowl full of Viennetta and chips that I eat with my fist. <laughs> Is it the uh, Scottish independence? Uh, they've agreed to have a referendum on Scottish independence. They, they have indeed. They've I mean, set a date. They've set a date. Have they actually set the date? They've set the well, 2014, yes. Because they're going to let 16 and 17 year olds vote in Scotland, so they've got to give them a year to sort out babysitters and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they've invented a lot of stuff. They invented the, the steam engine, the electric light bulb, the television, this expression. <laughs> <laughs> Before, when people felt like that, south of the border, they used to go... ..the <laughs> 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 <A> fist. <laughs> <laughs> then the Scots came along and went... <laughs> <laughs> the Scottish are very... They've, they've just canned a marketing campaign. This is how confident they are with Scotland. They had this gem lined up to advertise Edinburgh. Incredinburgh! <laughs> 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 And they shelved it. They thought, we don't need it. We don't need to go there. I say every town should be advertised like that. Well done, Dee. <laughs> <laughs> Glasgow, fuck yourself. <laughs> That's more <laughs> yeah, Relax, everyone. Yeah. Just whoa, 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 whoa. Take a moment, yeah. everyone. This, this is the killer. Sean Locke, everyone. Yabba Dabba Dean. <laughs> Johnson, what else have uh, people been talking about this week? Uh, Lance Armstrong. Is that something that's... Uh, I feel like that's been popular uh, over here as well. It's we've been, been, we've been, been chatting about it a little bit. American sportsmen generally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You guys get American things here? <laughs> <laughs> you get too many. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Treat. You can have that back. <laughs> uh, can I get a coffee? No, you can't get a coffee. You can have a coffee. You can only get a coffee if you bloody work there. <laughs> the Easter Bunny. You've just opened a can of worms yeah. with me, man. <laughs> no, it's the US elections. The choice between two quite dull men who <laughs> are terrible at talking. They had a debate this week, and they're just both terrible at actually talking. It was uh, really hard to listen to them go, we've got to good rate the economy because if it gets any more badified, we're going to be... <laughs> we're going to be saturated until, like, 2000 and later than now, cos... <laughs> it's called Mitch... Mitch Romney. Which yes. It's not a... <laughs> yeah. You've really cracked to the very heart of the US debate, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Mitch is not a name. It's... Uh, no one's called Mitt. I convinced my girlfriend that it was short for Mitten. <laughs> Mitten Romney. Yeah. My and... girlfriend. <laughs> oh, 
don't. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, have you been following the American election? Oh, Barack Obama and Michelle, his wife, are, are like the Jay-Z and Beyonce of politics. They're very exciting. Mm. Like, Barack Obama, he can sing, and he's, like, cool. And, you know, I experience some climate change when I look at him, <laughs> I'll be honest. Oh, yeah, like, when he talks about the national debt, my budget gap widens. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? The I'm a celebrity thing, isn't it? People, I think, I really, I, I can't bear on it now, is Ant and Deck, because they're like, it's gone on now, they just laugh. They're like Gaddafi's sons. <laughs> <laughs> laugh at people being tortured. They just laugh, ah, you're being tortured, you're being bitten, you have to eat this. Then they, ah, they have more torture. There's a woman in a coffin having... St Insects crawling all over her face, and they're just going, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> You can't tire of watching people going, ha, ha, ha. It's just, it just doesn't get boring. Yeah, but it's all the stuff in between where people start going, going, oh, I miss my family. I don't. They throw things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would be incredible on the show if you were ever do. Do they offer it to you? Every year. <laughs> <laughs> and every year, I happen to be in a supermarket where I can buy stuff. And I don't have to beg for it. <laughs> you know when you're doing your shopping, they go, would you like to do um, a celebrity and get me out of here? Or any of them, and you're going, yeah, but you see, I'm here and I've got nine Twixies and I don't <laughs> have to do a task. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lorraine, would you, would you go on? Absolutely, no way. I like my personal space, do you know what I mean? I don't want all these people around me all the time, getting on my nerves, having to eat anuses and willies. <laughs> it's just not my thing. Well, it's a shame. I... I, I... <laughs> Is it the Rolling Stones? Uh, back on the road, man. <laughs> I think they look like a great collection of Toby jugs. Did <laughs> 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 you see them on the show? Yeah. They've said they might play Greg Glastonbury, haven't they? Yeah, they said they might play Glastonbury. They might do, year. if yeah. the weather's all right. No, if they're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the massive road crew, they have one guy whose job is just to iron Keith before they... <laughs> <laughs> he just puts Keith out. All right, more like, oh, Keith, yeah, you mean for tonight, we're on in a couple of hours, so yeah, lift you up there. Their greatest hits album, this is the shittest album title I've ever heard, their greatest hits album is going to be called Grrr. <laughs> I think what it was is they were typing greatest hits and one of them just fell asleep on the keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Labour Party Conference. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. It's been so exciting that the, the main story that's come out of it is that I read that Ed Miliband, when he was at school, he got given a Walkman by Ken Livingston, which is a story so dull, you wouldn't even tell it on Bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> they all look like people who, when they come out of the conference, they still leave their little lanyards on when they get into the hotel, even though they know. There's a point on the train where they think, oh, I'm not at the conference anymore, I should take this off, and I thought... This will be an interesting conversation starter in the bar. <laughs> so, I see you've got a landlord. Yes, I've been at the Labour Party conference. <laughs> Nobody does that. They do. Nobody's bothered about any... Of all the things to get annoyed about, it's not like, and he didn't take his lemon off. <laughs> it was the same during the Olympics when they all had their caps on and their bags and they're like, yeah, I'm helping make the Olympics happen. Well, you're, you're on a train now. It's not happening here, is it? Are you having... <laughs> You're having a go at all the Olympic volunteers. That's what John's doing. I'm not having a go at the ones who were volunteers yeah. outside. Could you, could you do me a favour? Yes. Could you do me a favour? Could you put away your gold medals? Because yeah, I'm sorry. it's over now and it's yeah. boring John. Yeah. <laughs> because John doesn't like it when people remember nice things they've been to. I don't know. <laughs> there he is, killing joy. <laughs> well, I went to the Paralympics and I had my laminate. And I... Went for a meal. I went for lunch before. Oh, <laughs> you leave it on. Well, the day before I'd forgotten it, so I thought I'll put it on. I'll put my coat over it. That's fine. I took my coat off to eat, and then the guy came over. And he said, "Oh, what's that?" And I said, "Oh," <laughs> <laughs> he said, "What's that?" And I said, "Oh, I'm, I've got to be at the Paralympics." Oh. And he, <laughs> and no, he that's said, an interesting story. Actually, I've got to be at the Paralympics. Yeah. No, you're right, John. It is annoying. Yeah. <laughs> If he'd taken his laminate off and lost it, he couldn't get in. Yeah. The reason they keep it on is well, that's how they get in to do get their job. He's... You left it on so that he would ask and you go, sorry, uh, I'm doing a bit of TV work, apparently. It's oh. really boring, but uh, if you could bring the food quickly, because it's got to be on TV in, like, an hour, so, uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Working at the Paralympics, yeah, it's pretty boring. I'm sorry you asked me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Girl 
friend as well. With your, with your little lanyard and your girlfriend. And, oh. <laughs> That's the real issue. <laughs> have relationships. <laughs> yeah, I was just wearing a laminate in a bar. She just came up to me and said, what's that? Oh, God, yeah, I didn't even know I had it. <laughs> it's really heavy, and when I took my coat off, I thought, oh, bloody laminate, I'll leave it on. <laughs> what's that? It's just a laminate that points down at my penis. I've got a penis. Maybe you want to touch it and be my voice. <laughs> That's it for part one. See you after the break. Best bits. Our next round is pick of the polls. Here's your question. Right. Most people think cookery shows make it look too easy. True or false? False. False, Jimmy. Move on. False. Three. <laughs> look, I'll tell you this, OK? In GBB30... No, GBBO... GBBO3, Great British Bake Off 3, that's what we say. Quicker, just to say know. it, I think, if you don't. <laughs> John, who did really, really well and actually won GBBO3, he made the Colosseum, the Collar Ruddy Seam, out of gingerbread. <laughs> have, you, have you tried to cook food yes. in the real world? Yes. Let's talk it through. OK. First of all, you've got to go and buy it. Yeah. <laughs> then you've got to cut it up. <laughs> then you've got to cook it. Yeah. How is that easy? <laughs> and what part, what part of that? And then you've got to apologise no, to the people you served it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you look in the cupboard and you think, I don't have any of this shit in this book. <laughs> stuff to get on with, you know. Oh, some capsicum seeds. What? <laughs> <laughs> Where? When? Most people in that cupboard have got a, a tin of fish or something, <laughs> a tin of baked beans that have been sold to you, they were multi-pack only, but you let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just chaotic. You know, and you ain't got the pan that you need, you're trying to get the fish, you're cutting its head off, and then you're eating it with an hammer, <laughs> you know, and you get the broccoli, and you, you, you're not allowed to sweep people's yeah, faces with it, because they don't like <laughs> it. All the time, what is in the hallway? A takeaway menu. <laughs> 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 Most women would rather date a gymnast than a footballer, true or false? Well, you see, for me, I'd rather a gymnast because they're fitter, they've got bigger muscles, haven't they? Go on, show us the guns, come on. Look, and at, those. <laughs> Look at those biceps. And That's gymnasts right. are a lot less rapey than footballers. <laughs> <laughs> They well, can't well, turn it off, can they, gymnast? So the sex with the gymnast is fine, but the dismount... Just <laughs> can't... It's just, all just... about the dismount, I've said this before. <laughs> so do you end up by the side of the bed with your knees straight? Bent. <laughs> I look for recognition, she gives me the nod, I can go make the cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> most people think their life would make a good musical. True or false? Oh, I think most people's lives probably would make a good musical. Uh, fa Favourite musical? Sean? I don't really like musicals, to be honest. Do you like anything? I do, I like loads of things. <laughs> Love rice. <laughs> <laughs> I like books, I like music. What music do you like? Well, all the good stuff. <laughs> what genre? All the good genres. <laughs> do you like rock music? I like rock music, yes. OK, well, I would like to invite you to come and see Jesus Christ Superstar next year. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Are you more likely to buy a book if it's written by a celebrity? Yes or no? If I wrote a book, I'd call it Confessions of a Hollywood Gigolo. <laughs> and then I'd, the first <laughs> sentence would be, I must confess, I have never been a gigolo in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> You've written a couple of books, haven't you? I wrote yeah. one yeah. book. No, there's two. There's the one you actually give to the Inland Revenue. <laughs> Yeah, I've written a book, yeah. An autobiography? No, God, no. If I've learnt anything, it's the less that people know about me, the better. <laughs> no, it's just a book about jokes. About jokes? Yeah, not... I mean, not, not an amazing... It's not, it's not as good as... It's not as good as this book. <laughs> <laughs> what expression are you making there? What were you shooting for? Oh, this world. It looks like... <laughs> it looks like I sort of... 
pre your lip transplant. That was before you had lips. <laughs> what it is is... <laughs> I'll just read you a small little passage. When I think about it now, the thought of my bony white body pressed up against hers and her having to tolerate my wet breath against her neck, it's a wonder to me that she was never sick into my face. <laughs> Some uh, self-esteem issues there, John. It's one of those kiss-and-tell books where <laughs> nobody gets What's kissed, last... but I tell anyway. What's the last sentence? The last sentence. I'll, uh, oh, the last chapter's it. lovely. <laughs> Here's to many more years on the hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Most women are more attracted to a geek than a tough guy. True or false? <gasps> Most important thing a woman wants in a man, you know, is, is where he puts towels. That seems to be an obsession. <laughs> so you guys know about the towel thing. But I don't understand it. I don't understand why that's a particular... Every single woman I know, every single relationship I know about, that's an issue. Why a towel can cause so much pain and misery. It's a sign... Oh, now I've, now I've become the woman in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean It's now? not about the towel, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh. what the towel represents. Do you know what it says to me, Sean? You've got out of the shower and you thought, yeah, I'll let John get that towel. What are you doing in my bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Picking your towels up, that's what I'm doing, young man. <laughs> but no, the towel is just a, it's a very visible, wet, stinking gesture that says, <laughs> don't care where that goes. No, but the I'm towel... not, John, I'm not talking about leaving towels. No, I, I'm at a totally different level. I'm there, they're not on the, the, in the right place. You just hang them up somewhere, but oh. like a door. Just hang it over a door, yeah. like that. <laughs> like a little flag, like a symbol. I'm, I'm not... Sean's I'm... in that room, probably. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he's been in there recently. <laughs> I've made it. <laughs> it's worse, though, hanging it on a door, cos that says, I understand the process of hanging this up. I just choose to put it somewhere it's gonna piss you off. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your first one. Best way to make an ex jealous. <laughs> what do you think? I think being able to fit into their clothes. That makes them jealous. Look, I can get into your clothes. <laughs> so, uh, waddling in one of their dresses, go, look. It fits me better than it fits you! <laughs> I can look better than you in this dress! It's uh, jealous, not terrifying. <laughs> Most annoying thing about sharing a house. Oh. That's oh, your specialist subject, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah, anywhere for anyone needs minutes. to be anywhere in the next half hour. <laughs> <clears throat> it's me, innit? <laughs> it's genuinely me. Trying to live in a house like, yeah, 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 tin file, well, yeah, I'll buy it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> buzzing around like a little bee. I'm a penis to live with. <laughs> if it's your documentary on OCD and you did look annoying. <laughs> I saw with. that show. I thought it was a bit of a mess. Have you been sitting on that joke all summer? Yes. <laughs> 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 Totally worth it. Um... <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> so West Coast said, yeah. totally worth it. <laughs> yeah, cowabunga, Sean. <laughs> Top thing people do as soon as they wake up. You can get this amazing sleep app on your phone. It turns itself on instantly when you when it hears anything during the night. And then you wake up in the morning, it's got all oh, six recordings and you can play them back. Oh, I feel like paranormal activity. It's oh. brilliant. <laughs> like, you can upload it to the app. Like, the top ten are actually women farting while they're sleeping. <laughs> well, they got more holes, haven't they? From a scientific perspective, that's an explanation. It's the same reason they don't like spiders. Why? It's the same movie, because you've got more places for the spiders to hide. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got one. And if a spider wants to go up there, bloody good luck to him. <laughs> <laughs> Best way to start a conversation in a bar. Is that a gun in your pocket, or is your penis shaped like a gun? <laughs> <laughs> We go to the same bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how much people will talk to you if you throw beer in a dog's face. <laughs> They'll talk quite a lot, you. <laughs> if, if you, you just throw a pint of beer in a dog's face, <laughs> people start talking to you. you say, they can, first they say, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> and then you say, conversation star. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the chat. 
And they say, <laughs> usually, usually the conversation is, I'm blind and now my dog is drunk. Brilliant. <laughs> Worst thing about guests staying overnight. It's when you wake up at breakfast and they're in the kitchen already and you mm. think, who let you out? I bolted that. <laughs> <laughs> Quite fastidious. I imagine you don't like people using your stuff. I don't mind them when I give them stuff. Don't help yourself to stuff. I mean, make yourself at home, that's a cliche, isn't it? You say it, but you don't mean it. Like, <laughs> you say make yourself at home and someone starts making themselves a cup of tea, you think, well, what are you doing? <laughs> Get out of my cupboards. That's not where the tea's kept. Right, I'll make you a cup of tea. When I said make yourself at home, I meant sit down and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Christmas special, a show all about opinion polls, surveys, statistics and Christmas. Did you know, for example, 10% of pet owners buy their pet an outfit for Christmas? I bought my puppies an outfit for Christmas. It was a duffel bag to go swimming in. <laughs> <laughs> nice pair. That is clenched. You can crack walnut in that. I could crack a relax, walnut. Relax, relax. Drink it in, Bruno. That's what a real oh, man God, looks like. Oh, no. <laughs> Can I just say, while he was drinking it in, I think a bit went on me. And... <laughs> Another, we're forming a boy band together. <laughs> we are. <laughs> it's called One Erection. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be huge. Pretty uh -huh. weird being heckled from behind. <laughs> I'm actually used to it, Sean. 7% <laughs> uh, of people who give presents say it's the thought that counts, and generally the thought is, that'll do. <laughs> and 14% of Brits drink more than they intend to over Christmas, which isn't easy because they intend to get absolutely bloody shit-faced. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top three favourite Christmas traditions. Sean, your team, what do you think the nation love about Christmas? People like Christmas presents, don't they? You cannot have Christmas without Christmas presents. You, you don't have to have the turkey, you don't have to have the tree, but without presents, it's just uh, gathering. <laughs> Sunday, isn't it's it? Sunday, it's a yeah. Sunday or a bank holiday. Monday, we have to see your family. Mm. <laughs> yeah. If you're watching, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Christmas presents, what are you hoping for this year? What I would really like is one of those, uh, there's a Justin Bieber doll. I, w I would like. And uh, I hope it's really well made because it's got some serious shit coming its way. <laughs> <laughs> I open it and go. <laughs> <laughs> What's Bieber. wrong with Justin? What's wrong with Justin Bieber? Yeah. Oh, I, we haven't really... It's only a sort of an hour-long show, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're begin? so bitter, you're jealous because he's young and he's pretty. <laughs> hey, you old hag. <laughs> you old hag. <laughs> Johnny, you are you hoping for anything this Christmas, or...? Uh, just some uh, celebrity-endorsed perfumes. 
<laughs> oh, yes. It's fantastic. I'm planning a range. Oh, well, I've just released a fragrance. <laughs> As an adult, a present yeah. means you turn up at a mate's house unexpected and you hear him run into the kitchen and wrap up a jar of mincemeat or something. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say your friend had wrapped it, though? Cos boys aren't normally very good at wrapping, are they? Oh, yeah, but in old kitchen towel out of the bin. Cos <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend used to be rubbish at wrapping. He used to just get my present and put it in his man bag. And I had to close my eyes and feel around amongst the socks and the pepperonis. <laughs> <laughs> Bruno, what's yes. the best gift you've ever got? I actually have to buy it for myself. You have to I, buy ne it I never get any gifts. It's terrible, isn't it? Come on, you must have got. You no, must have got some. I never Come on. did. Is that because you're really sort of sexually aggressive? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, have you got anything on your Christmas list this year? What are you hoping for? Uh, trouser press. <laughs> I like Christmas, I just don't like the shopping bit. So I, I do a thing where I go to one shop and I'll get everyone's present. Like this year, I chose Screw Fix. <laughs> Fifteen minutes a lot. Job done. <laughs> Effective. Yeah. yeah. Have you bought any good gifts? Have you? I, I always shop really late. In fact, I shop so late I don't buy anything. <laughs> well, for me, it's all about customer service. Have a look at this. Selling is service. And service is selling. Service is selling. And selling is service. <laughs> I'm Great. selling to the customers to make them feel all right. I'm buying all these products with oh so much delight. I can help you find anything you could possibly want. Such ostentatious goodies that I can flaunt. It's selling is service. And service is selling. Service is selling. And selling is service. To say I'm, I'm pretty sick of people using sex to sell stuff. Just give it a rest. <laughs> yeah. There's no customers in that shop. <laughs> oh, there are two serial killers, and they're... <laughs> all the customers are in the back like this. <laughs> this year will be an interesting year for department store Santas because with all the scandals we've had. I imagine they'll have to take a very hands-off approach <laughs> with the kids. They'll probably be actually be in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids are about 30 <laughs> feet away, <laughs> and they'll shout through a loud hailer, I want some Lego! <laughs> and the sound will go, ho, ho, ho. And then he'll hand it to a policeman to take the... <laughs> <laughs> the big present this year, if you've got, for kids, is the... This is the number one gift this year. The, uh... What, Heather Trot from EastEnders? <laughs> <laughs> Um... <laughs> oh, well, let's have a look and see if Christmas presents are up there. <laughs> yes, Christmas presents, of course. Last year, I bought my girlfriend a Hoover. She didn't want it, so it's just been gathering dust. <laughs> Johnson, what other Christmas traditions do you think people love? Is it Christmas TV? Well, there's the Strictly Christmas special. Well, that's isn't brilliant, it? yeah. Christmas special. Yeah. Your show is pretty huge at Christmas, isn't it? Massive. I don't yeah. know see how that show could possibly get any more tinsely and sparkly. How does it get up to sort of Christmas level? Surely it's almost like there's a danger of tinsel poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> there would be so much glitter and tinsel everywhere. But there is even more at Christmas. More fake town. Glitter's everywhere, snow. You have to watch it. It's brilliant. My biggest fear is that my telly breaks on Christmas Day. There's nothing else to do, is there? You know, the pub's closed, the zoo's closed. <laughs> uh, you, your mates aren't allowed to come out to play. <laughs> it's Christmas Day. I don't know what I'll do. It's probably just hide in the woods. <laughs> what do you do at Christmas? I do, yeah, cos I don't have a table, so we just sit on the sofa with trees. <laughs> I think that's nicer, though, isn't it? I don't understand people who don't have tellies, cos I don't know how everything... Where is it all aiming towards? That's where your, <laughs> seat, your seats are all pointing towards something. What is it pointing towards? Books. <laughs> <laughs> Posh people, though, they, st they don't watch anything but the Queen's speech, do they? That's the test. If you watch the Queen's speech, because no one else watches it, because she's just lying. If she was honest about her year, it'd be funny, 
But she doesn't like the future. She said, I've seen a lot of my family this year. Harry's cock, Kate's tits. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't. She'll bluff over it. Goes, it's been a lovely year. I've got a lovely house. I quite like to, I quite like to see the outtakes, cos she's not going to have nailed it first time. <laughs> <laughs> this year's... Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Go again. <laughs> This time, I promise. Fucking auto cue. Oh. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Christmas TV and films are up there. <laughs> yes, Christmas television. You know, Bruno, I love a bit of ballroom on Christmas Day, and that's why I wear tracky bottoms. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, things on, but there's one more thing to get. What do you think, John? Is it going to church? You know, religion and all that real meaning. <clears throat> As if anyone wants the real meaning of Christmas. I drink heavily to avoid the real meaning of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm about. But people, they go to church, don't they? And... Yeah, apparently three million people attend church on Christmas Day. It's, it's one of those things you're either into. I look at the church like Claire's accessories. I'm probably never going to go in one. <laughs> but for people that need it, absolutely fine. Pop down the <laughs> If I end up in Claire's accessories, something's gone wrong. I've had some sort of breakdown. <laughs> the idea of going to Midnight Mass is exciting, isn't it? You think, yeah. oh, I'm a little bit tipsy, it's yeah. cold as candles, there's been like beautiful music in a lovely church. And then you get there, and a bloke in a dress talks about his invisible friend for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> like, wake me up when they serve the wine. <laughs> Because it's after pub chucking out time, isn't it? People are just like, they'll have wine, let's go there. <laughs> I'm a bell ringer, so. Um... <laughs> Bruno, that does not mean what yeah. you think it means. <laughs> no, I just have a call. <laughs> I'm a, I, yeah, I'm a bell ringer, so like Christmas Day is like our FA Cup final. <laughs> yeah, but the lads are ready and we're just going to go out and enjoy ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> sure, do you go to church on Christmas? No, I don't, no, Jimmy. For me, you go, you're in or you're out. It's a bit like um, skiing. <laughs> <laughs> you're either skiing <laughs> or you're not. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's very, not my best analogy, that one. <laughs> right. I mean, it's it's a bit like eating works. soup. It's a bit like eating soup. You're either eating soup or you're going, oh, I don't fancy that. Well, no, it could be. Could be... People have soup, like, you don't every half do it, no, do you? No, you do. I do. don't have soup every day, but I sometimes fancy soup. Yeah. yeah. I like the You're right, or... it's not a good one, is it? I'm trying to think of a better one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Third one, come it's on. It's a bit like, um... Oh, Racism. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you either wear a bra or you don't. Although I do that sometimes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to be an altar boy. You used to be an altar boy? Oh, yeah. Christ, that explains a lot. Um... <laughs> And I got to, I got promoted to the incensey thing where you do that. What is that? It's like oh, a that's solo. a good swing. That's so the incense. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure what you were doing with your hand. Oh, he's good. Jimmy's oh, good. You're good. Catholic Church is well renowned. They never laid a finger on me. Or me. I'd never had any problems in that department. It was me. They found me a bit sexually aggressive. Actually. <laughs> 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 the go, Just back off. All right. <laughs> Tell you, going to church is not up there. Not oh. one of our favourite traditions. Midnight Mass is held on Christmas Eve at midnight to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, who was born at Pretendo Clock on the 32nd of February. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fingers on buzzers. One more thing to get. Christmas dinner, maybe. Christmas dinner is, I mean, it's pretty unbelievably good. Well, it's just huge. You know, it's, it's, all, it's always good for me. <laughs> We're entertaining for the first time ever this year. My boyfriend's cooking, though. I'm just in charge of chopping. Apparently 60% of Christmas dinners are prepared by the man. Rest of the year, not fussed about the cooking. Christmas, I want to take control here. Why don't they just do the carving? Why is carving meant to be an honour? You're just hacking at meat. If you're doing it properly, it's not hacking at no. meat. <laughs> I'll do it in the garden, in my pants. <laughs> and you get to eat the whole thing yourself. No-one's going to touch it. <laughs> but what's what? Have you cooked it first? <laughs> really can't remember at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Men always want to set fire to the um, Christmas pudding as well, don't they? That's a manly thing, isn't it? Mm. And you can just see your dad, if it's not working out very well, if it's not taking light, he just goes off and comes back with a jerry can. <laughs> oh, this will work. <laughs> fire and raisins. <laughs> My idea of Christmas, I think, as you get older, you want to have it every two years. 
It comes around <laughs> too often. I think every two years would be good. Firstly, it means finally Slade have to dip into their pension pot. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine the size of the turkeys. They'd be huge, wouldn't they? You know, you'd have to you'd get them in the oven. Like, like trying to get Chris Moyles in a smart car. So. <laughs> <laughs> Most people just pretend that they like turkey on Christmas Day and they ignore it the rest of the year round. It's the same with your nana. <laughs> just... Be honest, she's though, just, it sort of is. She's just boring and dry. <laughs> the dripping. That's what we have fights over in my house, the turkey dripping. And we pour off all the fat and then you leave it in the fridge and you get a big layer of fat and you get the jelly. And that's like the essence of the soul of the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the cabinet. It is, it's delicious. And you, you, you try it. A lot of people put it in the gravy, put some in the gravy, and then on Boxing Day, you scrape up a big piece of fat, put it on some toast, and then get the jelly on. And we have oh. fights in my house. <laughs> well, who can get the ambulance first? <laughs> 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 well, luckily, we all get defibrillators for Christmas. <laughs> it's delicious. Aldi this year are doing a four bird roast for £9.99. And it's got pork stuff in it. That's five dead animals for a tenner. <laughs> if you can kill and raise five things for a tenner, yeah, that's no, not that's right, good, is it? No. So I'm trying to avoid all that. Do you think they all live together inside in each other? In the same cage. <laughs> <laughs> like, when, when, uh, when the goose opened its mouth, there was a chicken in there and a duck. <laughs> For sakes, daylight. <laughs> Their balls off as well. Like at animals, they cut their balls off so they taste better because apparently you can taste randiness, which means I am safe from cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I imagine I taste very gamey. <laughs> I've castrated goats. You've done what? I've now? castrated How? goats. When did you castrate a goat? I castrated goats when I was 18, 19. I castrated dozens of goats. It's actually very simple. What you do is you get, a, you get, you get rubber bands. Yeah. You get a oh, yeah, three or four this. day old goat yeah. and you just tie it many times around its, its testicles and they wither and go black and then just fall off. Yeah, the weird thing was he was working as an optician at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Bruno, the, the, uh, the Italian Christmas, what do you eat? Well, it's Italy? different. It's, quite, it's very different, actually. What we start, usually you start with antipasti. She sounds nice. Prosecco, <laughs> uh, parma ham, let's say uh, little grilled peppers. Uh, Parmesan cheese with lovely prosecco. Then you have a starter, which usually is a soup, tortellini in brodo, which is delicious. Then you have the boiled meats. Then you have the roasts. Then you have the cakes. So it's kind of it's, it's different. We don't have turkey. And are you surrounded at this by all the Dolmio family? <laughs> <laughs> Simulating yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas is it's like all rule, all bets are off on Christmas Day. You can go right cornflakes. I'm going to have them with Bailey's. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about this today. Cocoa pops with Baileys, and make a cocoa pop rice crispy cake as a little cup, pour the Baileys into it. Willy Wonka land, innit? Eat the cup. <laughs> that would be fucking amazing, wouldn't it? Here's <laughs> <laughs> your advert as well. Oh, there you go. These are fucking amazing. Oh. <laughs> 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 Honestly, fuck me. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Christmas dinner is one of our favourite things. <laughs> Indeed. Our favourite Christmas tradition is Christmas dinner. Pigs in blankets are popular around my house at Christmas. That's my girlfriend and a sister watching TV in oh. a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can laugh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so those were the top Christmas traditions. But Christmas is about much more than that. Last year, the lights in Oxford Street were turned on by Take That, as were hundreds of middle-aged women. <laughs> <laughs> and... When it comes to decorating the tree, there's nothing better than going up to the loft, dusting off that old box, bringing it down to the living room, opening it up, realising you've accidentally brought down your old porn mags, going back up to the loft, and half an hour later coming down with the Christmas decorations. <laughs> so at the end of that round, John, Bruno and Joe have one point. Sean, Sarah and Stephen have two points. That's it for part one. See you after the break. Welcome back to our Ten Catch Christmas special. Can you, can you hear that? Can you hear oh. that, ladies and gentlemen? I think that might mean... I think that means Santa Claus is coming. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Helm, our Santa Claus. Hey, Santa. Hello. 
Is it a busy time of, of year for you, Santa Claus? Is it a busy time of year for me, is it, Jimmy? You taking the piss? <laughs> Just asking, is it? Yes, Jimmy, it's fucking busy right now. <laughs> Okay. Well, we were going to book you in the summer, but people weren't into it. <laughs> He's such a prick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how come you're here? Just tell us why you're here, I'm sir. I'm here because I'm going to ask a series of questions, and then if you get it right, you get a nice gift, and if you get it wrong, you get a pile of shit. So, okay. <laughs> so we're going to do this. Good you're Christmas happy? Eve. I'll oh, stop talking over my bit. <laughs> so uh, this first question is to you, John. OK. John, true or false, 70% of dog owners buy their pet a Christmas present? Oh, it's got to be 100, hasn't it? Why would you get a dog if you were an evil shit who wasn't going to buy it a Christmas present? <laughs> I will say... Trolls? <laughs> <laughs> I really want a present. <laughs> I think it's true. You think it's true? Yeah. I think it's true. It is true! <laughs> it is true! <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, this is for you. Um, the elves love you, uh, and you, Sarah, as well. They love you as well, Sean. They love you, Joe. Uh, you, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been a naughty fucker this year, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they've written you a novel. What was the title of the book, John? It's Pride, Prejudice and Debauchery <laughs> by Jane Austen and Sylvia Hadfield. It's, it's a personalised erotic novel for you. Sarah took the lead and, directing Richardson to a conveniently lonely direction perfect for their purpose, they set to hiding themselves away beneath dark trees and kissed at last. Richardson unbuttoned his trousers with one hand, <laughs> the other twined around Sarah's neck and quickly he pulled out... A very fair prick. <laughs> a full stand. <laughs> Richardson took Sarah's hand and placed her fingers upon and around his urgent cock. <laughs> she grasped it tightly. <laughs> Ooh, Richardson! <laughs> It's a great gift, and I'm very grateful for it. Good. <laughs> OK, this next question is for Joe. Hello, Joe. Hello. You remind me of a young me. Joe, name all of my reindeer. Can we help him? No! <laughs> um... Jermaine, Tito... <laughs> Janet, <laughs> Latoya. Latoya, and um, Michael. Mickey. Don't know. Sorry, I'm. Dozy D. Sneezy. Bashful. Doc. They're dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> They're Jacksons and dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> you got the shit gift. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is it the balaclava or something? So, so I say shit gift. Um, it's bloody. Is it? <laughs> it's like um, it's just like me in negative. <laughs> uh, thank you, Santa. <laughs> so, uh, Bruno, what's yeah. the biggest selling Christmas single of all time? White Christmas by Bing Crosby, or do they know it's Christmas by Band Aid? Why Christmas by Bing Crosby? Yeah, fine, fuck it, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> keep it short, keep it sweet, keep it short. <laughs> I've got no oh, idea. Oh, Liam Goodman. <laughs> well, I, can, I see him nine months of the year. I don't yeah, want it. Get your boyfriend to wear Once again, Santa. <laughs> Our next round is Pick of the Poll. Sean, Sarah, Stephen, pick a question. Oh, uh, the Big Ben. Big Ben, OK. Most people would rather spend New Year's Eve home alone than at a party 
true or false? I love New Year's Eve. It's great. You go around, you get drunk, and you go around and you kiss and hug people and go, hey. It's like being Berlusconi for a day, isn't it? Like, <laughs> 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 uh, Joe, what do you do for New Year's? Try and get into parties. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you do, though? Run at them. <laughs> Uh, New Year's Eve, John, are you a big New Year's Eve guy, big party animal? I've had, I've had nights before where I've just gone out at midnight, let a party popper off in my garden, come back in again. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it such a big deal in Scotland? Because um, they've got nothing else to live for. <laughs> <laughs> That'll go down well north of the border. Maybe they just bagsied it. Maybe everyone got, like, a thing, and Scotland mm. went, we'll have New Year, that'll be ours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have Pancake Day. Wee. Pancake Day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time yeah. I you... cook, is Pancake Day. <laughs> 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 so most people would rather spend New Year's Eve home alone than at a party. Can I still have a buffet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. OK. At least if I'm on my own, there's a guarantee of sex. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? Can <laughs> <laughs> I time it? Ten! Woo-hoo! <laughs> that's a hooter nanny. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's get some answers on this. So most people would rather spend New Year's home alone rather than at a party. What do you think, John? No one wants to say in, do they? False. You're saying false? What false. are you saying? False. You're saying false? OK, I can yeah. tell you the answer is false. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 62% of people would rather go to a party on New Year's Eve than stay home alone. So, at the end of that round, Sean, Sarah and Stephen have three points, John, Bruno and Joe have two points. <laughs> That's it for part two. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the AI 10 Cats Christmas special. I think that sound might mean that Santa's back. Santa, everyone. Hello again, Santa. Hello. I think we got off on slightly the wrong foot earlier. What have you been up to since since you were last here? I've just been sat out there. <laughs> you could have delivered some presents in that time. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. We do it. I've got to rattle through it. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Okay, cool. fine. Sean, what do people prefer to receive: homemade presents or bought ones? <sighs> bought ones. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow! Blimey! It's a body. <laughs> At least a head. Got one. Santa <laughs> <laughs> oh. got you that. You can't just fling it back in his face. I got one. Wrong tog. <laughs> I mean, you haven't got one of those. Oh, it's a sleeping bag. It's not. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's technically a sleeping bag, but it's got legs. Oh, hello. <laughs> we got it for you. Oh, I see. Come on. Wear it. Come on. Do <laughs> <laughs> you like camping? <laughs> yeah. I like, I like camping. I don't like scaring other campers. <laughs> You're my favourite, Sean. Thanks. <laughs> You've got a little nozzle so we can fill it with helium and just carry it around. <laughs> like a little... an angry balloon. <laughs> <laughs> you look like an alcoholic who thinks he's a Teletubby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks... It looks... It looks a little bit like a safe sex campaign. <laughs> It looks like my immersion heaters come to life. <laughs> Something really quite bad could happen to me wearing this suit. How's it looking from the orange? It's pretty okay. Are you enjoying the show there? <laughs> oh, the, oh, the, oh, the, yeah. Sorry, did you just say? Oh, did you just say that's a pretty <laughs> hot candy? Nice, Are you yeah, enjoying right? the show? Oh, that is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good look, yeah. Mr. Blobby's yeah. been on a diet, hasn't he? Oh. <laughs> Terrible. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. There oh, you go. Cheers. Thanks, Santa. <laughs> Santa. 
It's a lovely gift. So who's next? Good, right, brilliant, Sarah. True or false? In Estonia, it's traditional on Christmas Eve to have a sauna with your family. Oh, True. True. Yeah, it is, which is all sorts of fucked up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think it sounds lovely. I'm going to back out and get a, and get you get a present. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a doll of me. <laughs> what was it called? It's called the Mega Millican. <laughs> Can I get it out? I'm going to see if it's anatomically correct. Because I have got a cock. Um, <laughs> that is terrifying. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite scared of you. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right, brilliant. Third <laughs> right, one of Stephen. Who would people rather spend Christmas with, their own family or the royal family? Oh, their own family. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You. Thank you. He's got an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> You're just picking up on that now. Ladies and gentlemen, Santa Claus, give him a round of applause. Thank you, Santa. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your question. Top thing Brits only do at Christmas. <laughs> Eat chocolate for breakfast. Only do at Christmas. Well, I... Oh, no. <laughs> I don't like... I don't like advent calendars. Oh, I like an advent calendar. We got a really good one last year, and, uh, and I came home on, like, the 2nd or 3rd of December from a few days away, and my boyfriend looked really guilty, and I said, what have you done? And he said, I've eaten a fortnight. <laughs> 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 I think some people only do at Christmas is drink eggnog. Eggnog? It's liquid egg. <laughs> Why would you want to drink that? You only should drink it if there's loads of alcohol, and then even then it still tastes like glee. You're, you're not a fan of eggnog? I've got, I've got a little drinky treat for you. Yes, you haven't got eggnog, egg. have you? you well, I've got, I've got better than eggnog. What I've done is I've, I've got some eggnog, but I've bought some bacon-flavoured vodka. Oh. <laughs> so I'm making yeah. bacon and eggnog. <laughs> let's, let's have that. OK? <laughs> oh. It's just egg and cream. Why would you do it? All right, well, I take it you don't want one, then? I'll have one. Well, I'll have one. <laughs> I've got some other drinks. Don't worry about that. I'll pass Is these that Go on, I'll, give, I'll give you two of these over here. Where's Hang the vodka, on. I'll give you the vodka in one second. Hang on. There's the vodka. Well, but taste that genuinely. Yeah, do you want to put it in the eggnog or just...? I mean, that looks like a pussy discharge. No, no, that's already in the eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> the other drinks that I've got for you, just because Christmas drinks are fun, I've got... This is pizza-flavoured beer. I'll have a go on that. What's that sure. one? Sure. <laughs> so it's, it's beer, but genuinely tastes of a pizza. Get involved. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you want to give that a go? Oh, yeah, I'll have a go, yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> I want some beans. Did you drink them? <laughs> <laughs> you did drink them? I have mine with a fried <laughs> slice. A lot of the stuff I drink smells of bacon because I don't know they're washing up properly. <laughs> <laughs> he drank both. That <laughs> j <j> <laughs> There you He's go. Vile. He's vile. He's vile. Yeah, get, get, oh, give that, me some more, my darling. Oh, I've had bacon Gen for months. Genuinely, that is the that taste that taste of pizza. That taste of pizza. Changed my mind. It's not a pussy discharge. <laughs> I'm gonna smell so good on the tube home. <laughs> okay, so top thing Brits only do at Christmas is something you do at Christmas dinner. Speak, speak, to, your speak, speak to your crackers, relatives. Crackers, 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 Christmas crackers. Christmas crackers, 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 crackers is the right answer. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, and I can tell you it's a draw. Everyone's a winner. To all our fans, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you watching at home. That's it from us. Good night and a Merry Christmas. Yeah.